How, how did these things get here? Well, I mean, that's fine. You can, I mean, I, I could, I could put them, I could put them uh, back where in, in the closet where where we keep them normally. If you, if if you're good with that, <laughs> you know the closet. I can put them, I can put them back in that. I don't want to go back in the closet. We, we, we I think it was like 2014 when we all decided we shouldn't, but <laughs> I didn't know where this was going. Ah, <laughs> uh, both times. Hello. Um. I'm here with um, Sherry, who you might know as Connor Shaw, or that, that one person me. that made the videos the one time. Did uh, you know? Yes. They're still making the videos. Well, they're making videos, not the videos. They're making videos. And well, I'm other making thing all, the, all the videos, which is why it's been hard for me to make my own videos. I am the person who makes all the videos in the world. I didn't know this was the reverse side. Back, uh, for, back blood. for Blood. Uh, it's not getting any more updates, and that's a shame. I'm doing Let's Play, a stream play over on YouTube Live every Thursday because the game's actually good and they marketed yes. it wrong. It's a co-op deck builder FPS and it's actually fun but they kept marketing it. It's Left 4 Dead 3. It isn't. Here's one of the guns in it. I am so glad you mentioned the deck building because that goes so well into the guns themselves. They built an entire game around the idea of loadouts. Like, it wasn't just an incidental thing they added afterwards. Sure, some of the numbers are a little whatever, like, say, 5% movement speed increase, 5% reload speed increase, like, eh, 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 but those are basic things. As you get up, you start to get the more complicated stuff. Oh, and a yeah. lot of that fed back into the way the guns were used in the game. There mm -hmm. were different play styles that you could lean into harder or change based off of how you applied your cards, including things like uh, hip fire being a main mechanic or not. If you oh, wanted yeah. to aim down sights to be the focus of the game, or if you really did want to lead into the old Left 4 Dead style of uh, like aim down sights only being reserved for scopes. Mm -hmm. um, I've um, I've been running Act One with um, this deck where I've got the cards admin reload and down in front, so I just crouch and fire. I don't Absolutely. do any friendly fire damage, and when my LMG is out, I switch to my sidearm for a few seconds, and then I can switch back and keep mowing down. See, uh, like you said, it would have been great if they had marketed it that way, because yeah. it is true. There is an experience in there that essentially, if you really wanted it to be, could be Left 4 Dead 3. Yes. And that has, yes, absolutely, that has legs. Like, there are people who are interested in that. And then when but you I show them, hey, here's a whole deck builder mechanic, here's... You, you collect cards in the field. The weapons have tiers of like, like, like if, um, rarities. It, it's not Left 4 Dead 3 anymore. It feels, it feels to players who were expecting it just to be Left 4 Dead 3, like unneeded extra fluff. It feels like modernizing the game in a way they did not ask for, which I disagree because I think those mechanics give the player the ability to make the game play the way they want it to play. Yeah. I, I also think what didn't help is the name. It has nothing else to say for oh, itself yeah. other than we're like Left 4 Dead, but again, whoa! It's just like... I will, I will also say, however, there is an issue currently of there being truly so many zombie games that have so many names that yes. uh, not just plenty of names are taken, but also archetypes of names are taken. So, like, you could call something Days Gone, the day before... Uh, last day, etc., etc., and those are all games that exist, and they're all slightly different versions of apocalypse games. Mm -hmm. uh, and you start to run out of anything that sounds good after a while. So they leaned into the thing they knew they had, which was the foothold of going. Remember Left 4 Dead? That was good, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. But you. you you do remember Left 4 Dead because uh, people still play actively to this day, which perhaps means that the market yeah. for a new Left 4 Dead is perhaps a flawed advertising metric and uh, saying from yeah. better <laughs> Left 4 Dead or moving on forward past what Left 4 Dead started. That's good. I like that. I've been rambling. Go on. Um, anyways, this is the, Ber uh, the Beretta M9. Um... <clears throat> Where is Big Blue? Hold on. Big Blue? It's my 64 ounce water bottle. It's big and it's blue. Ooh. I call it Big Blue. Uh, is it a Bubba? Is it a Bubba bottle? It is. I'm surprised that you got that just by me saying Big Blue. 
It's the exact same water bottle my boyfriend has. Uh, I, sorry, I am internally struggling over if I should call him boyfriend or fiance. Uh, but, but you know, things are things are happening. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but yeah, it's the exact same one he has. So so I was able to recognize that immediately. <laughs> That's amazing. I should they they should give me marketing rights. Yes, you 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 sold a water bottle retroactively. <laughs> hey, if you're if you're having trouble hitting those targets in the back, you should get the long barrel. You should get the mods on. Oh yeah, you know what? I haven't actually fired at these. I was about ready to go and like giving this thing like rankings and numbers, but we haven't even discussed this whole pile of stuff. That these are yes, kind of, these are kind of extraneous. I, I kind of just pulled out the melee <laughs> weapons for fun. Please don't drop them on your feet. Oh gosh. <laughs> it's virtual. It's fine. I'm I'm a digital. I'm I'm a digital. You are the metaverse. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I wouldn't word it like that. <laughs> <laughs> I well, like to think I'm more like Miku than Metaverse. Oh, you're you're a Vocaloid. I see. Well, I wouldn't say that. I'm just I'm just I'm in the computer. You're in the computer. Ah, see, these mods also lean into the game's emphasis on. It has the bones of Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, more more specifically. I think that they really should have focused more on the depth of the customization in this game rather in it rather than it being here is a new left for dead style game with these mechanics on top of it because then players are going to be less likely to engage with that aspect as well they'll just throw on base stat boosts uh and not really mm -hmm. think that hard about it uh and just pick up whichever gun has the highest number rather than the gun that specifically leans to what they want and that's not the point of the game. The amount of times I chose to pick up a gun I knew was worse than the gun I had in Back for Blood, usually like an assault rifle or a sniper rifle or something that was a higher tier, but it was broken and it had mods on it I didn't like or whatever. I didn't care because I knew I could fix them. I knew I could, I could work around those features. Uh, and that itself is something Left 4 Dead doesn't have and I think would have been good to really focus on in the marketing, being able to put all of these different modifications on, on your guns, especially all the different guns. So with that said, how do you... I've realized I have you... two of these. How do you feel about the, about the M9? Well, I was gonna say M9A1, but the M9, according to Back 4 Blood. Um, it's perfectly cromulent. Um, I don't mind the pistols in Back 4 Blood. I will say the one thing that bothers me back, about Back 4 Blood is the animations. They're very kind of like stiff. Correct. Absolutely. I agree. Fully. Yeah, I'm kind of sad that the game doesn't... They, they built it with no mod support in mind, because even just somebody like doing just like an animation overhaul to, to kind of give those some kind of post humus shine and polish mm. would be much appreciated, even if it doesn't add anything like to the game mechanically, just that little bit of, just a what? tiny bit of polish after the fact, like kind of like what people did with Left 4 Dead, you know? It's gotten entire uh, updates that were community driven. Exactly, and if there's one thing I know about Left 4 Dead, it <laughs> wasn't, it didn't exist in the public consciousness uh, so long through modding. That wasn't one of the things that kept it around. Definitely not. No. So that's why Back for Blood shouldn't have. But also, Back for Blood was a much smaller team, to be fair. So, yeah. Like, uh, it was just Turtle Rock, not Turtle Rock and Valve. Exactly. And they didn't have the previous game to build <clears throat> off of, or indeed. Yeah, it was just kind of build the bones in Unreal and build as much as you can on that before the deadline hits. Correct. And, I have more to know. say about that, but I don't want to be on this gun for too long. So yeah. I think in the spirit of uh, of certain game having just come, in, come out and I was talking about IGN, uh, you should give it an adjective and a number rather than a full like one to 100. I'll say an adjective and a one to 10. So like a dirty nine or a, a flawed 10 or something oh, like that. We, we've done this before on tryouts. I actually don't know if you've known that. So for the M9, well, I already get to use my favorite adjective of the day. This is this is a cromulent six. You get a you get it. Ah uh, ah! Thank you, Dank Pods, and also The Simpsons for giving us the word cromulent because it it doesn't mean anything, but it conveys so much. Are there better sidearms? Yeah, but this one's pretty fairly balanced. 
Um, it's also a very good, for the purpose of the game, it's a very good, uh, I'm out of ammo, I'm out of supplies, I found a gun on the floor and I just need something to survive. Oh yeah. Uh, gun. It's good to have what a lot of those around, uh, as like, you're not always thrilled when you see it, but you know it will be an option available to you. Yeah. If you need it. Yeah, like, oh, you know, oh, I've got, you know, no ammo in my shotgun. And, not, you know, oh. there's an ogre, we've got a baseball bat, I'm not going to be able to do this. Oh, pistol now, on the floor. Is that a CZ that I see, or is it the game refers to it an M9 Burst? This is not a CZ, this is the M9 Burst. This is, I'm actually glad you said that, this is the Beretta 93R. Aha, I see. So it's the Beretta 9, but we've added some, some additional accoutrements, including this little fun dial on the back here. Which allows us to, if I grab the four, um, absolutely not hit anything because we shoot three <laughs> bullets at a time. I am looking up in the background this make of gun and seeing what I was thinking of and what it is in fact based off of in real life. Uh, well, you said the the CZ. Are you thinking uh, the, C the CZ seventy five auto from Counter Strike Global Offensive specifically, which is apparently a real gun? Yes, uh, that do that does exist. But I was thinking of auto pistols in that vein. However, now I'm looking at more of them, and I'm seeing that this is very much. Again, I don't know a lot about IRL guns other than World War Two era because of raid, but I do know uh, a decent amount about how guns are mechanically introduced to games that are attempting to be realistic, a la Back for Blood. Uh, mm -hmm. so I have an idea of these. So this is an auto, uh, an auto, um, a shooty gun is what it is. This is a big, big bang bang. Is but, that what it is? That's what I'm looking up. Yeah, this is, this is a rat -a -tat. Okay, that's an auto rat -a -tat, looking it up. Uh, I'm seeing some fun movies from, from Pixar. Is that what we're looking for? Um, yeah, you'll probably remember the scene where, um, Linguini shoots, um, what was his name? Skinner? Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that yeah. is what happened. Yeah, that's probably my favorite scene of the movie. Uh, also, uh, this has given me enough time to actually look up in background that the Beretta was uh, specifically designed for Italian cops uh, in the 1970s, mm -hmm. which, um, if you know anything about history, uh, <laughs> is a big, like, oh, the 1970s, you say? Hmm. Uh, but, yeah, uh, I, granted, again, uh, the whole world has a history of police intensity that I think if you have to mention it for every particular gun, like you're gonna, that's gonna be the whole video is talking about it. So oh, I yeah. think it's fair to <laughs> acknowledge that and then carry on. Yeah, that's what we did with any of the IMI weapons. Um, Absolutely. It's just like, yep, here we go. <sighs> Anyways. Anyways, uh, now I'm done looking about that, I'm gonna go back to my tab about Justice Antonin Scalia, the much less controversial tab I have open. Uh, I'm definitely on a watch list after this research. It's fine, you can just chalk it up that um, you've got one of those things that just spits random search queries ah, into... yes. Yeah, I've got one of those things yes, that ADHD. prevents tracking. Yes, yes, oh. that's what I have. <laughs> no, sorry, that's not, I, I, I am, I am autistic for the record for anyone who thinks I'm making an offensive joke. Um, or the, although it's, the more I, I, more time that passes, I probably have ADHD, but that's harder to get a diagnosis for than the autism diagnosis I already have. Regardless, yeah, um, it seems, um, it seems like they often go one in this, like, hand in hand, yeah. but not always. It all ties into neurodivergence, which gives us this very specific love for, uh, guns in a virtual sense. <laughs> This is actually fine. It, it, um, once I get the stock and the compensator on it, um, this thing's this thing's quite nice. Um, I used this a lot, pairing it with a, if memory serves, a sniper rifle. Oh, that's a good combo, lot. yeah. So you've got your up close and fast, and then your long range distant heavy. That's nice. Uh, that was also that also tended to be my build in Counter Strike uh, when, yeah. I, when I played that a lot. It was the op and the CZ. Yeah. Um, I also have to thank you for your earlier comment on Raid World War II. Thank you for mm -hmm. sharing your brain worms with me. That game occupies an uncomfortable amount of space in my head. Um, this is a very solid 8 in progress. 8 in progress, I enjoy that. Yeah, it needs a couple mods, but once you get them modded up, it's, it's totally fine. 
All right. The Glock 23. One step ahead of the 22. Yeah, it's a Glock 23, but the problem is um, their model is very obviously a Glock 22. Whoa. Yeah, no kidding. Also, it seems to be uh, a little lower res than the other ones. Is this straight from the game? Um, I'm assuming not, right? No. A bunch of the older assets in H3 were bought on, like, the Unity Asset Store or CG Trader. Absolutely. Totally um, fair. So a lot of the newer ones are made bespoke for this game. Um, Anton's cool. got a whole team of um, artists who go and find atrocities like this, which is real, and then model it painstakingly. But how, yeah. how, how do we wish to dress this up? I'm thinking suppressor. Uh, absolutely. We already used a kind of, you know, standard Glock earlier just as a demonstration. I'm having a hard time hitting the distant targets. Maybe you could figure out why. Uh, well, let me look up, let me look up, uh, the 23 back for blood. You, you don't need to do that, you can just look at my screen. <laughs> no, no, I know. Don't worry about it. I mean, you are trying, man, oy vey, though. Wow, I'm, I can see the bullet impacts. Oh, you got one. I, I hit the, I hit the target, I hit the small, small, small target. <laughs> Corded suppressors may be a bit big for this. Yeah, perhaps. Do we have smaller suppressor? I grabbed these two out just as examples, but I don't really think it makes a difference. Okay, so we can handle the distant stuff decently. I would help if I had more ammo in this thing. Um, oh yeah. Well, let's give the, the, the 40, yes, uh, the absolutely. Glock here, a ranking. Um, I'm writing all these down. It is, I would say... <clears throat> It's it's a healthy six. Uh, do we not have the, the is the Glock? Oh, sorry. Uh, I assumed that was a mod. Okay, no, the full auto mod. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so the there is a Glock twenty three auto, which in the I game see. is it's still this design, just somehow full auto. <laughs> um, you know there is a full auto Glock. It is the Glock eighteen. 18. Um, but of course, it would be too polite to give us that one. We ha instead must go <laughs> full auto 40 Smith and Wesson. I will also say that the Back for Blood wiki is stunningly unhelpful in any information about these guns. It has stats, uh, kudos to them, it does have all the stats. But the main thing they're concerned with is showing off all the different skins that exist oh, and yeah. unlock them. Yeah, I was hoping for like an actual proper gallery to see the mods. Um, and instead they're like, here's the Adventure Zone skin for the Beretta. And it's like, I don't need to know that. None of the skins in that game look all that great in my opinion. Uh, yeah, I'm looking through them and they definitely look like someone saw gun skins in a game and when I could do that without really knowing yeah. the design intent. Like, for instance, a lot of the most interesting gun skins in in Counter-Strike uh, are very heavily based off of the extant design of the gun. They yeah. try to use the lines of the <clears throat> gun to their advantage in the design. Back uh, for Blood has a lot of textures that go on guns. Yes. Yeah, it's it's the distinct difference between using the contours to your advantage and just assuming you can throw a um, a, um, a PNG of some colors at the UV map and color it to be whatever you desire. Now, granted, some of those work, like camo Those, oh, yeah. those work okay, uh, but others, like like this flame design they have, for instance, pack in it's called, uh, does straight up look like a water pistol that someone puts some flames onto. <clears throat> like, it looks like a gun emoji. Like, it doesn't look real. But, again, they're also optional. You can equip them if you choose. And what we're focused on here is the functionality of the guns. So how would you say the auto Glock 23 compares to the standard Glock 23? Just, can this target even come down? Maybe you're hit, maybe you're hitting it, but the, uh, at this distance, the force isn't enough to actually knock it back. Well, okay, there's an easy way to test. 
We'll just sure. grab the other go the other Glock. Yeah. Wow. First, first <laughs> shot. Wow. Meanwhile, it, uh, again with the incredible. Oh, I just had to. Oh. No. It, it looks. Try aiming a little lower, like like at the floor. This is for the record. Do do not use this as real life advice. I uh, aim at the floor below. Ah, there you go. Yeah, you the just are kicking up too fast. They're kicking up too fast. You just have to aim half a torso below where you want to hit. That's how you win Counter Strike, kids. Uh, always aim at the floor. And <laughs> no, that's a, that's a very beginner strategy: is to purposely aim your gun lower because the kick will will shoot it higher. Uh, for for any games that very heavily rely on recoil as a mechanic. Yeah, I just uh, use the G3, and then everybody laughs at me because I have to use the G3, so I don't play Counter uh, Strike. <laughs> wait, wait, wait! The the gear? Um. Oh, what is I it? I think that's what it's called. I think that's what it's called in the game, isn't well, it? Or okay, well, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say the one thing that I learned covering Payday. If you pronounce it Gewer, everyone will yell at you to pronounce it Gewer. Okay. Uh, uh, all right, everybody, listen. Um. Uh. It is the Gewer gun. The Gewer. I, okay? I even spelled mine phonetically G Y E W E R R U R R or something like that, just to get on the nerves. No, it's the G3 SG1. Oh, the auto sniper. The auto sniper. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, that's that's there for a reason. It's there to serve a specific purpose, and it has a high cost to balance it. Yes. If they just wanted you to use the very narrow selection of weapons that have hit the big time, the game would only have three guns. Correct. Uh, that it's got was... a big wheel of guns for a reason. That itself became a known running joke and issue. Uh, but also, this is not a Counter Strike video, so I won't. No, go go that. watch that one, or I might be I might have my my I might have beef brain and have forgotten what was even in that video. Um, I've been doing this for three years. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, so after this, if Th you want to give a uh, rating <sighs> to... Uh... Th this is an absolutely bullish four. Up close, that thing's gonna just turn up the Swiss cheese, but out at a distance, you're, you're, you're literally hitting around your target because the human wrist wasn't designed for this. Holly ain't gonna shoot a 40 Glock full auto and take <laughs> anybody <laughs> out but her own ability to fire. Uh, all right. The well, the, uh, again, what I'd argue is the most well-known gun in media. I will look that up in the background out of curiosity if anyone's talked about that. But the M1911, yeah. which is the M1911. Yeah. Um, I would say, in terms of most iconic, this, maybe the the single action army, the AKM, and the M4. Those are probably like my four. Uh, well, according to inexplicably inexplicably business insider <laughs> these are some of the most well-known guns in games but i would uh, a lot of these are are like or games in media but a lot of these are uh you know unrealistic things get bash things like han solo's pistol and the like which was a which was a luger that they threw some shit onto um uh, it wasn't a luger it was a oh. mauser oh yes thank you uh, yeah that's called kit bashing and yes. it is a it is a lovely form of prop building, where you take real things that exist, so you have the general shape that an audience expects, and then you customize it without getting rid of that core functionality, if okay. you can. Um, so, I've uh, made up my mind. We don't have anything, have anything to say about the M1911. It's such a, it's, it's, yeah. it's popular for a reason. It, it's, it's, a, it's a classic six. Um, I would give it a seven, because it is fairly accurate, and 45's got some stopping power, but they give you seven rounds, so. Oof. Uh, you really got to make the most of them. Uh, back for blood 1911. Is that, uh, is that also how much is in, uh, it's eight in the, uh, in the game, but that's still, that's still not great. Oh no. I know how they did that. Um, okay. So it's, it's, it's seven, seven in the magazine, one in the chamber. Yeah. You take it, you put one in the chamber. I and then, see. Okay. Yeah, just wonderful. Shoot, shoot, I, I, I'm in here dodging all of the bullets like an old-timey western. Oh, we're uh, still like, doing that like, bit. Uh, no. Oh, again, a classic, the Desert Eagle. Uh, do I have written down which Desert Eagle? Uh, specifically the, the, uh, 14? I believe this is XI, no, but no, a 19, XIX. Okay, that one's the 50. 
Uh, we have a we have two flavors. Well, we have more than two, but we have two flavors of regular Deagle. We've got um, <laughs> fancy and uh, plain. This is vanilla. This is French vanilla. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> Thank you for reminding me. I saw coffee. Oh, there you go. Um, this game H3 also has. We have this one at the long barrel. Uh, this one at the longer barrel. The, the longest barrel. Well, no, because we also have this one. Mm -hmm. Which is just, it's more gun than I think a human being should need. Uh, but if you do want more, Anton's only found a single picture of this. It was a shop room prototype from IMI. It's the <laughs> Deagle, it's the Deagle Carbine. That would, that would explain why some of the metal is like really undetailed on it. Yes. Or is that plastic? Um, I believe like this and this bit are all polymer. But the actual oh, barrel, wow. the actual barrel is metal. I've got to say, I'm actually impressed with the rendering in this game because once you said polymer, I'm like, oh no, that is what that is. That that actually looks right. Yeah, for this being a VR game and us having to render everything twice, there's stuff in here that looks absolutely phenomenal. Well, because we need to use one of the more normal. I didn't Correct. grab the magazine out of that one. <laughs> yeah, use yeah, use uh, another magazine immediately, jams. Yeah, I load the 1911 magazine in there, huh? Well, it was a little does loose. That, that doesn't work, does it? In uh, real life or the game? It wouldn't. Um, okay, good. <laughs> I'm even thinking, like, even if you somehow got the, um, the, the firing pin on the bolt there to hit the striker on the bullet, it wouldn't be able to interface with any of the, the grooving inside, any of the rifling. So it would just be like firing a smoothbore projectile. So, no, it wouldn't work. Um... I will say that also looking this up, a lot of people seem to argue specifically, at least on Reddit, so take it with a grain of salt, uh, on the Back for Blood Reddit, that the 1911 uh, is one of the worst pistols in this game. Really? Uh, so it's interesting to use something that I think even people, even if the Deagle sucked in this game, a la like how the pistol in Halo was so good, and then in Halo Infinite, they scaled it the fuck back. Yeah. I believe it was it. It might have been five. Uh, five or Infinite. Um, well, every Halo kind of had a history of slightly nerfing the Magnum in, into what it is today. Uh, but they still have that history of the gun being very fun and very powerful. So something like the Deagle... Go ahead and fire. Even... Even if the Deagle sucked in Back for Blood, you would still get people using it. There is a there is a legitimate reason. There is something nice about this powerful hunk of fucking metal. Yeah. It's loud, big, not too big, uh, and powerful. Yeah, like so much of weapon design is also the aesthetic surrounding firing, not just the hard numbers. Uh, we um, got talking. Go, no, go ahead. Uh, there was a story about I think it was it was one of, it was the Wolfenstein multiplayer game, where everybody thought the Thompson was no no the the PVP one. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Um, you might actually know the story then. Uh, everybody complained that the Thompson was overpowered compared to the MP40. Um, they had the same stats. The difference was the Thompson's a uh, animations were more like they looked stronger and the gun was way louder. The numbers were the same, but the aesthetics of firing made it feel more powerful. Uh, damn. I was gonna say maybe you can make a, a another video about this if you haven't already talked about it in, in, in a video, but somebody else already did. Yeah! <laughs> um, it's... God, um, I can actually talk about this because I don't think I'm releasing the video. I might release the script on my coffee. Um, I wrote a video about where all of, like, the, like, all the rarity tiers came from. The white, green, blue, purple, orange. Yeah. Um, it's such a boring answer is the problem. Uh, see, I think the first time I ever I ever remember seeing that mechanic in the game was Dungeon Defender, if memory serves. And that's definitely not the first time it happened, but it is no. the first time I ever personally saw it. And especially as someone who has colorblindness, I'm red-brown colorblind, which usually doesn't matter for, for scenarios like that. Uh, I found it interesting why they chose the color as they did, the human psyche behind that. Similar with, like, in a funny, fucked up way, bringing this back to gun culture and Americana, uh, and the planes that are flying overhead. Sorry if you can hear that. Uh, 
It's fun. I, I don't know if I heard it. I also live next to a regional airport, so there's also planes oh, flying I'm overhead so too. <laughs> uh, but the the sort of threat levels thing was that was that George Bush or George W. Bush? But either way, of like yeah, we're at oh, threat level orange, threat like, level yellow. That well, that, that was, was that was po that was like during the war on terror, so like early yeah, 2000s. So that was W. That was W. Okay, and uh, he like that whole idea of. Here are the different tiers that speak to people's perspective. Yeah. Much, for instance, the next tier of weapon we're going to be looking at, which is the 357 revolver, uh, if you're looking for it. Um, uh, unless you're looking for a mod for the Deagle right now. No, I'm I'm perfect. I'm I'm fine with the Deagle. It's definitely a seven. I don't know how specifically to describe the seven, um, but it's definitely if, a seven. What if I just put definitely a seven? Yeah. Um, okay, especially once you that. get like this, like, I don't know if it can take a stock. I should actually have looked that into that, but, um, even without the stock, even with just the compensator and the, uh, the red dot, it seemed decent enough to, uh, to aim and shoot. I have some pretty significant qualms with using a rifle style gas system in a pistol, um, which I've discussed ad nauseum in every other video the Deagle's ever I appeared see. in this video, I so. I see, okay, so this yeah. is a running thing. Yeah. Like the idea of the rifle style gas system in a pistol, you don't have the mass to absorb the blow of operating a rifle style gas system with a 50 caliber round in that uh, mass there. By the by, you're looking for an R8? Okay, I was wondering if it was the R8. Uh, um, the R8 in H3 is very interesting because it's one of the game's few left-handed revolvers. Fascinating. Ooh. Yeah. I'll put that fat, put that speed loader in. Hell yeah. It's very awkward to do as a right-handed individual. <laughs> yeah, cuz like I, I, all of our I other like guns are either right-handed or they're oh, amb yeah. or they're ambidextrous like the Schofield where it just yeah, lo cracks loading open. Up front. Yeah. yeah. Or it's the single actions which all have the loading gate. I will also say by the way that this this may have been changed at some point. But apparently in Back for Blood, the skill, one of the cards, uh, Mag Carrier, does not apply to the Desert Eagle or the Magnum, which inherently does make them interesting cases of they are weapons that are very, very powerful by default, but their upper reaches aren't as high as simpler guns that if you mod them correctly or got the right cards, yeah. you could turn them into something truly insane. Yeah. I'm assuming this is the Magnum they're referring to, correct? Yeah. Um, speaking of insane, I've decided to go ahead and mount this with oh, yeah. what I seem to find on it every time I see the Magnum, which is the, the obnoxious, goofy hollow sight and a laser. Not to mention, I, I actually remember specifically when I played with some friends, yeah, when we played this yesterday, Drago was actually talking about um, when um, you and him played it a while yeah, ago, yeah. a couple years ago. Uh, uh, we, we ended up falling off not because not because playing with him uh, was bad or anything. Uh, Drago, we actually had a great time. Uh, but also, Back for Blood just failed to catch my long-term yeah. interest. I think what didn't help was you had to, once you built your deck, you had to earn your deck as you Correct. played. They've changed that now. You get your whole deck right at the outset, and you add to it as you play. The whole me mechanism of having a campaign you go through, I personally thought was very neat. However, it did mean that the best way to play the game to not have too much trouble later on was to play through, like, a couple of levels, unlock some cards, build a new deck, and then start a new campaign from the beginning with that deck. Yeah. And that was tedious. What I found was they recommend you play through the whole campaign on recruit difficulty to build up a huge stockpile of cards. You know, use yep. the supply deck or the supply chains to obtain a bunch of extra ones. And then you then build decks to go into veteran, which is the normal difficulty. Which is fun, by the way. We're at an interesting uh, point in game difficulty discourse where that didn't hit. Nah, you're good. You're good. You're a way better shot than I am in VR. I mean, I have oh, 120 no. hours in this, so I'd hope... <laughs> That's fair. I've got some decent shots. I even have a little guy up here behind this uh, wall. I should have I should have had the guy be 
a different like material or something. Maybe put one of the uh, the towers here, which makes it more like resonant clang. Because the, both the wall. Oh, it'd help if it was loaded to make my example. Oh, An example yeah. you wouldn't be able to hear because <laughs> of <laughs> so subtleties and um, of how we film this. Oh wait, no, that doesn't make any noise. Okay, never mind. So there is a clang. Uh, okay. I was like, I can't tell if I'm hitting him or hitting the the like the wall there because they both make a clang. But no. Okay. So how do you feel about the magnum? Um, I don't use it very often in Back for Blood, um, but here it's operated quite nicely for us. We'll go ahead and just eject it, because... I, I did find that finding the pistols with the scopes on them, and this is coming from someone who does enjoy playing snipers as my main thing in games, mm -hmm. uh, but I was never really a fan of having, like, the long-range revolver with the scope Oh, yeah. what the revolver is for because I, all I'm thinking in my head is I have a weapon that's specifically designed for this thing why would I want to just have a shittier version of that yep. sitting on top how do you it, feel about it overall though it's very much like the deagle um, it's got 8 shots versus 7 um, it's weird that it is an 8 shot revolver I think that is funky and cool I'm not a big fan of the weird like hyper tactical like oh uh, you know we have to bevel every surface rails um, kind of yeah, aesthetic. It, it gets. It, it does kind of look like a dog chewed on it a little bit. Yeah, the front end looks a little mangled, but. I wrote down a C the Deagle out of 10. Are you good with that? That is fine. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, the last pistol is the. I've always, I've always wanted to play Russian Roulette. The last pistol is the Tech 9 full auto pistol. Uh, with, the, with the full auto mod specifically. Okay, because, well. Okay. So what that was it a joke. is? Don't worry. Yeah. Um, the reason I have to specify is because the game has a, a, a Tech Nine. Oh, um, I see. So H three has the Tech Nine as it came, and the Tech Nine was semi-automatic. Correct. Um, but of course that's lame and boring and very hard to get people excited about the Tech 9 You know, it's got this reputation as a gangster gun. See the, the flippin' uh, rap group Tech 9 um, So here we have the super illegal Tech 9 mod, <laughs> um, which is this fun kind of Counter-Strike themed paint job one. Very kind uh, of rough around the edges, and it shoots uh, full there auto. There you go. There we are. That actually, that actually looks not dissimilar to the... Uh, the cross, cross slash or perhaps the cyber uh, polka uh, skins for the Tech Nine in Back for Blood, um, like, huh. like that's kind of a, sim a similar design philosophy behind it of like you know the red and black uh, mm. squirrels. Uh, um, but can we discuss these very fun and cool iron sights? Yeah, I wanted to talk about this. So the Tech Nine was, if I recall correctly, the only the, the things I know about the Tech Nine from a standpoint are Counter Strike where I used it a lot because I'm a big fan of it, where it is not an auto weapon in Counter-Strike. You have to keep, you have to uh, match fire. So what does that make it? Uh, Semi-auto? Yeah. Is that, is that what that is? Yeah, semi-automatic. Keep, keep firing, but it doesn't have like a yeah. mechanism. It's, it's not like bolt, bolt action or anything. Yeah, semi-automatic is, it fires once per every time you pull the trigger. Correct. Uh, and also, like you said, cultural prevalence. Part of what I think of is the dual automatic Tech Nines that Lana has in Archer, um, where they make jokes about the fact that they're full auto uh, guns. They, they they make a lot of jokes about how the Tech Nine, the perception of the Tech Nine in the world is extremely different from how it actually exists. Mhm. Mm I'm trying very hard to think what might help. Uh, can you? Okay, you can take a stock, but you take it in a weird place. I'm, if I'm going to put a stock on you, I'm just going to... How did I do this? Uh, let's see. Uh, it's also worth noting that despite being a pistol, the, the game does officially give it all of the benefits of an SMG. Any cards that affect SMGs in Back for Blood are, are work for the Tech-9. Ah. That's convenient. Because it does, the way it exists in Back for Blood essentially makes it function as, say, you know, not just like an MP9, a machine pistol. 
uh, of like a, a smaller machine gun as opposed to, you know, it being like starting from machine gun and working backwards as opposed to starting from pistol and moving forwards to, to SMG. Uh, yeah, once I put a stock and a compensator on it, it got better. I think it's just a bit much is the so, thing. Try using it like an SMG. Try getting a little closer to your targets and and focusing more on. You know what? Like, yeah, we are, we are firing it. only on the top targets. We've got a whole set of lower targets here. Yeah, if you use it more like an SMG, it has it has its function, especially as something that takes uh, pistol ammo. Although I don't know, I don't remember how Backward Blood organizes it. Does Backward Blood have separate ammo? Yeah, for, it's for got SMGs. Um, it's got sniper ammo, it's got shotgun ammo, pistol, SMG, and then rifle. Pistol, SMG are one category, I see. Okay. Yeah. That, okay, for, for something like this, that makes sense. However, it does also raise the specter of, at that point, why not just use an SMG, which is what we're actually getting into now. Yeah, you get into... Well, it's because they occupy different slots. The SMGs are only primaries. Oh! Oh, okay. Okay, in that case, th this... Within the context of Back for Blood specifically, this gun does serve a niche perk. Yeah, this is a backup SMG if you want something full auto, but don't want to sacrifice your primary slot, and you don't have the card that allows you to carry a uh, primary in your secondary slot. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, with that in mind, um, if you keep it up close and personal, it's pretty good. Um, out at further ranges, you're not really going to be hitting much, but you, you, you aren't going to be wanting to sharpshoot with these sights, which are a, a piece of metal that's kind of been bent into the shape of like rear leaves, and then <laughs> this tiny loop of a front post. Yeah, it does kind of look like a feature at a skate park that would exist for you to like do some sick soap tricks off of or something. Or maybe that's yeah. just me. Uh, yeah, like, but yeah, it's like got this... a lot of jutting metal. Yes. Uh, there's absolutely uh, 200 points for a gap if you connect these two grind rails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it would be called the, uh, hang on, it would be called the Deck Nine. That would be the name of the gap. <laughs> I'm on board with that. Um, <laughs> so with so, that, I don't think it's as good as the Beretta, because I like the controlled bursts. We have yet another seven, um, but this one for entirely different reasons. Uh, I kind of like its punkish in your face charm which is really about the only place that gun's going to be able to help you is when there's f uh, things in your face we are moving on to, to a weapon i think everyone will recognize the mp5 uh take your pick uh which mp5 do you... uh you have good lord uh, and then we have a whole second page <laughs> just these up here yeah. uh specifically we're looking for the a5 the mp5 a5 Okay, I believe that one is the navy pattern one with the burst. Um, Anton, please fix. Add the secondary object to all the other MP5s. Um, I'll have. To, <laughs> I keep meaning to write a bug report about that, um, and I just never oh, do. I see. Yeah, if I go over like these, there should be secondary objects like all of these things here. Hey, I got a level with you all. Uh, I just looked up the MP5 on the back for Blood Wiki just to have more things to say. And this gun truly has, I'm I'm going to say a controversial thing, the worst skins in the game. <laughs> this is, none of these look good. Uh, it's kind of impressive. I kind of like Pumpkin Eater. I kind of like it. But okay. other than that, wow. Uh, well, but, I would say look out for the Back for Blood fandom, but they're currently, like all five of them are currently grieving, <laughs> so. Yeah. And I feel bad for them. I don't, I don't blame the company. We'll talk about this more once we're not, far, well, like, once yeah. we talk about the MP5 some more, but I don't blame Turtle Walk that much. Yeah, no, from a business standpoint, I get it. Um, it's just kind of a nice shame, shot. especially, um, I don't know if you played Acts 5 or 6 at all. Oh, were those added later? Yeah. Then I don't believe I did, no. They're really good because it's about a Ooh. cult of Ridden that have maintained their sentience and worship the worm as an evolution of humanity. And you go through their compounds where they've set up like chemical traps and bear traps for you. You have special units that carry guns or are all clad up in metal armor and ambush you. 
it, it, it's like it's such a cool idea and it's such a cool spin on you know the kind of bog standard like zombie apocalypse kind of scenario absolutely um it, it is like legitimately awesome uh, while on the MP5, I want to talk about how I enjoy Back for Blood's design philosophy is the idea of things you save persisting, which is very much against the philosophy of the original Left 4 Dead 2, where you had what you had within the level, within the map, yeah. and you, you know, you had the different acts, but still, within that campaign, you had your guns, you had the things you picked up, you had your tools, and then once the act ended, that was it. The only thing you took with you was knowledge and, uh, and any skill from practicing, from playing the game. Yeah. Back for Blood acknowledges the reality of as you go and you find guns you like, you know, you'll keep them because they're useful and you and you enjoy using them. So it yeah. gives purpose to something like the MP5, for instance, still existing uh, later on in the game. Because look at this, this is still a very useful weapon, even if numbers-wise you get something better. Like it, it is good to have something small, modifiable has good range, good damage, uh, and also isn't like some super uber exclusive secret weapon so that if you know you die and lose it, it's not the end of the world. Mm -hmm. you, you can probably find another one. Yeah, I also like um, in regards to the persistence of the act, um, I feel like the, the tiered loot makes so much sense in regards Absolutely. to that. Absolutely. Because you start with like the white and the green tiers and as you progress, by the end of the act, you will have Oh, God, by the end of, I think, Act uh, 3 or 5, I had a legendary pistol that I got from one of the Ridden Hives, which is this combat encounter they added post-launch, which is kind of cool. Um, I had um, a legendary Desert Eagle that made the enemies drop copper, which was awesome. Um, and then I had um, I had a, a purple tier AA-12 that ah, I had a bunch of legendary nice. mods on. And I, I got that, like, you know, halfway through the act, and I kind of just steamrolled through the rest... And there's that sense of satisfaction that, you know, in that case, you know, I found this stuff early and I got to bring it with me the whole way through. But then also in the stream play I'm doing now, um, it's only until like the very end of Act 1 that I'm starting to see like the blue and purple stuff. So, you know, my reward for kind of experimenting and holding on to stuff is I get to swap it out with better things and play that game Absolutely. of are the, are the cool mods I have in my gun now worth trading up to the next tier or swapping out for a different class of weapon altogether. I really like its design. I, do, I don't know. I, I think okay. Let's let, let's let's get off of the MP5 so we can move on to another. Uh, weapon uh, while uh, talking about this. Uh, a very uh, a very satisfying nine. I'll give that. I'll even a oop. satisfying nine. Yeah, we'll we'll even bump that further out. Okay, now we're on to the UMP45, which is exactly as it's named. Yep. Uh, this is, again, I would argue, a fairly popular gun to exist, although I think this one is more associated with, like, law enforcement than it is with any, like, like for the yeah. Tech 9 is very known to be, a, like, a gangster gun. I'm saying it, I'm saying, I'm saying it like that because this is a very white person thing to say, uh, whereas yep. he's usually associated with police forces. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it's just me and my, like, odd diseased brain, but the UMP feels to me like the Luigi version of the MP5. <laughs> I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, it, it's a lot yeah. of the same kinds of sensibilities, but shaped a little odd. It, it's, it, it is shaped not dissimilarly. It, imagine, if you will, the design philosophy of like Mega Blocks versus Lego. <laughs> the MP5 is, is Lego, and this is Mega Blocks. It still serves the purpose. It yeah. just feels like it takes a little bit of a weird route to get there. Yeah. Let me go look up if which one came first, the MP or the or the MP5. We you don't even need to look it up. Again, we have the years in game. Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, 2000 for the UMP. So the MP5 absolutely came first. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, 92. Uh, so let me check out the just, original UMP date. The UMP was designed in the 90s, however. Yeah. But it first entered production in 99, so they were made around the same time, but the MP5 got there considerably first within a decade. Or yeah, so. got there earlier in the decade, like just hot off the heels of the Cold War. 
Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, because um, I'm glad the Cold War ended and all those tensions are gone. <laughs> yeah. Man, uh, as someone who, who I, I won't get political, don't worry, but as someone who has a fascination for um, particle physics and quantum mechanics, boy howdy, the end of the Cold War era is certainly an interesting time to read about. <laughs> uh, yep. Of like, si science in all fields got really weird because so much of the focus for a long time was beat, we gotta beat we gotta beat the bad guy and then once the Cold yeah. War ended it was like well uh <laughs> so that's where we got these like more like designed weapons yeah. I think is where a lot of these came from it's like well um, we don't have war isn't immediately on the horizon anymore mm -hmm. until we decide to have a war on terrors anyways but, I'm gonna give the UMP um a fine enough nine. Um, fine enough nine. I don't like how it feels in my virtual hands, but the gun operates exactly as you'd want it to. I was actually able to do like some very crazy long distance shots in a previous one with the UMP. I don't yeah. like. I don't want to like the UMP, but every time I use it, it is <laughs> just absolutely like fine in my hands, and I'm like, I sit there like, why are you so good? You now, don't you don't meet my expectations of what I would expect this gun to be like. <laughs> and, the, I mean that in all the best ways. The OMP was always my go-to uh, eco buy weapon for Counter Strike for that reason. Uh, I liked using it. I was good at using it. Uh, but also, we're moving on now to the Uzi, which is specifically a a mini Uzi. Yeah. I feel like this is say, the Uzi everybody thinks of when they think of Uzi. The Uzi is perhaps. One of my least favorite guns that exists. Ah, uh, um, I mean, let's real fast. Like, it doesn't look that small. It's pretty big. Um, but if we yeah. compare it to um, the a full size Uzi, yeah, it's pretty noticeable. <laughs> this um, thing, this thing comes plowing through like a truck. It's it's massive. Have you ever made like a flat pack dresser or wardrobe or something like that? Like, where it's, like, compressed down pieces that you have to build together and you have to be really careful while building it. It comes probably with its own weird Allen ranch, wrench that you're supposed to use for it. They, you're describing my desk. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's my desk, too. Uh, okay. The Uzi feels like a cheap Amazon version of other guns that you build like a flat pack. It feels so light and cheap and, and it sounds cheap. Which is a which is an aesthetic and is a good thing in certain circumstances. Yeah. However, every time I see it in a game, I always feel like I'm gonna get my fingers pinched in some of the plastic and metal that holds, and it's gonna hurt, and it's gonna be an owie, uh, and it's gonna jam. It feels so cheap. Yeah. At least at least from a video game perspective, and this is from absolutely seeing real life ones. Yeah. This is absolutely designed for the military, and I mean that in a derogatory term. <laughs> cost optimized to no end uh yeah again i, I talked earlier about the sten gun the the plumber gun from the from world war ii oh yeah that wretched world piece war of metal pipe yes which is i will say one of my favorite guns not because it's good it's not it's objectively not but because of how funny it is to me yes <laughs> uh, uh the uzi came about in the 40s and 50s um oh really uh Oh, again, I have the years or here. Did it? 56 for the original Uzi. Oh, no, 54 for the original Uzi. I got a whole slab. Of, you have like half a tree here, buddy. Okay. Mini so Uzi. That, uh, how do you feel about it? I don't like that it can't take a scope because God, it needs one. Let me see if it can in game. I don't think it can, but I would imagine it can't because the whole top is where the bolt is. <laughs> Well, yeah, but also uh, in Half-Life 2, you can double barrel fire the clearly single barrel shotgun, shotgun so anything is possible. Yeah, uh, speaking of Half-Life 2, um, I actually pulled this out like way earlier, but then I tossed it. Um, oh, yes. We have the MP7 from Half-Life 2, complete oh, with, its, they... with its stupid tiny little red dot. Yes, and, it's so good. And then a grenade launcher kind of just hastily slapped underneath. It's surprisingly hard to find information about this. Oh, uh, perhaps apt. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of Left 4 Dead 2 screenshots. The very fair. Um, I will say my biggest qualm with the mini Uzi is as the Uzis get smaller, they get faster. 
Yes. Um, I really love the, the fire rate on the original Uzi. You know, it kind of chugs along, but a lot, you know, you got plenty of time to kind of recenter yourself for your next shot. And as yeah. we get faster and faster, you know, as we get into the, uh, the micro Uzi, um, it gets so uh -huh. uncontrollable that it's frustrating. Um, luckily, Anton has heard our prayers, and My we have an word. even smaller Uzi. Oh, um, dear. It, it looks like a pricing gun that you'd see at Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> um, behold how the lead comes out. Oops, I've got that on. Okay. Oh my goodness! <laughs> this, this this is the gun that kicks back. This is the gun that fights you back. Yeah, it's a very cost-effective three. You can do a lot better. I I understand yeah. why it's here. In a, you know, in an actual like scenario, like if if you're actually somewhere out fighting the ridden, don't. <laughs> you know, you have all of these other things. Use them. Uh, people are saying, at least according to the community, that the MP5 is worse than the Uzi. Well, uh, they can have their opinions, wise. and they might be based on stats, but they're not here in this room with me, so... <laughs> uh, I'm the painter of this picture. Uh, it is also worth noting, I won't get too far into this, but at least according to to the OP Well, if you want to tell this. me what's next, and then we can... Absolutely. Uh, next... Ooh, Chris Vector, baby. Oh, boy. The Chris Vector, a.k.a. the version of the Uzi that I enjoy, even though they're not they're not that comparable. Uh, I, I, this um, is kind of what I would like the Uzi to be. <sighs> it, it feels goofy, it feels cheap, but it's kind of fun in its cheapness. God. Okay, I'm about to ask an impossible task of you. Um, would you be able to look up the Chris Vector in Back for Blood and tell me if it's got anything by default on the rail and if it has a, uh, a foregrip or not? Look. Every game kind of treats it a little differently as uh, to what sits on the rail. It's got pretty cheap iron sights. Uh, okay. like, not, yeah, ju just, like, one at the front, one at the back. Okay, um, I'll just grab our, our generic flip-ups. Uh, and it's got a, an interestingly shaped stock. Let me see the stock on your, on your end. That is not the stock it has. The stock it has is much, it's a much longer pipe, and then it's a lot narrower at the end. Like, the actual triangular part of it is a lot thinner. That's weird, because this is literally the stock that comes built onto the gun. Uh, yeah, it almost um, looks like it was a stock designed to fit the animations they had, but I do think this mm, is a real stock that exists. Okay, but does it have a four at all, or no? Does it have a what, sorry? Uh, four, four grip. Uh, no, actually. Okay. Uh, yeah, it ends at the magazine. Okay. But as I discuss every single time the Vector appears, the one problem with the Vector is they don't give you... Okay, well, that time it works just fine. I was about to say, they don't give you nearly enough ammo to, to really take advantage of the recoil uh, system in this. They are holding it by the forefront grip area. Okay. Uh, yeah, but it also seems to be purposefully left a little vague, because I think there may be mods that you can put on it for different stocks. I'm not going me on that. But they, they might have purposefully made the animation in a way where they could manipulate it as needed. Uh, but as for the... Uh, is it the magazine capacity that's specifically the issue? Um, in general, like, in real life, um... Because how, how this works is after your initial burst, the, um, the recoil is kind of self-mitigating. So... Mm. I think they call it, like, a linear recoil system. Um, uh, I'll but because it chews back. through the magazine so quickly, you don't really get enough time to, you know... You know, accept kind of the, the the recoil impulse and then correct for it, because by that point, your magazine's empty. Uh, what is the magazine capacity that you're having putting these in? How, how many bullets are in? 25. Uh, so in Back for Blood, it, it, it defaults to 19, so it's even worse. Oh, right, because they're, uh, they're under the impression that this takes Glock magazines, which is a commonly held belief with the Vector, which I don't quite think is correct? Uh, I believe... Oh, it takes Glock 41 magazines, which are the oh. the 45 Glock. So, we can do this. Uh, it also <laughs> seems 
the real vector in real life. Oh dear. So we can we can. Oh, that looks wrong. I think that might be just because I'm seeing like every other frame because of the uh, screen here. But that that looks wild. This is about how it operates though in Back for Blood. It's a very hungry five. It it. It eats a through. A very hungry five. It, it eats through its entire magazine, and Back for Blood's decided to give it like the smallest magazine known to man. You know, it, it must be from the same store where the Xboxes don't come with Uno. Um, it, it just it, it, it's just oh god, I'm reminded of how someone described how Tracer played in Overwatch. <laughs> oh, <laughs> great yeah. sentence. It's a very long sustained shotgun burst, and then you wait for another one. Uh, it's also worth noting that the vector, apparently in real life, again, according to this Reddit thread I'm reading, uh, has a two-round burst setting. It does. That that one does. And it doesn't... Oh, this one also does. Yeah, we can go ahead and... It also, you can fire it in semi-auto, which makes no sense. Yeah, so... Uh, that very much screams more like cool to me. Like, there's a purpose there, but I feel like if that's what you want, there are other guns that would do that thing better. Yeah. Not, not, not dissimilar to rifles. However, I would argue this first rifle would not be the first place I would go for that, which is the AK-47, otherwise known as the AKM, specifically with a railed handguard. Um, so I think really the, the easiest way to do what we want to do is I'm going to... I'm going to put the... Oh, oh. Oh, ah, there Magic we go. trick, there we go. And then, um... I will then just hold on to... This. In case I want to slap the sight on there, I can do that. Ah, I see, I see. Good call. Okay. So, the AK in-game is not quite an AK-47, despite what it claims. Most uh, AK-47s are not AK-47s. <laughs> correct. Um, they're uh, almost all either AKMs or, uh, what are they, Type 56s, and you can tell based on how the, the front sight looks. If it's completely enclosed, it's the Chinese clone. I see, I see, okay. Yeah, so the next time you're watching something where they got, like, a, a Russian or a bad guy holding an AK, and you see that it's completely closed, just know, that's not a Kalashnikov, that's something else. I, if it's a modern setting, though, I do, the, do enjoy the idea that you you won't know until you get it. Like, they just have a big shipment of them. I am thinking about these, this NES Classic controller I bought recently, which turned out to be a complete fake uh, that I'm returning today as my fact. Um, like, the inside was set up in a way where it could never work. And I'm thinking about that with guns, about, like, to be fair, if a movie gets that wrong, that's one thing. But also, if you're some, like, Russian mobster who, like, is just given a gun by, by your boss and told that you just got to be at the ready to shoot, you're probably not going to think about it too hard. Yeah. Neither did the game developers when they were putting this gun into the game. <laughs> uh, they were just like, well, it's a zombie shooty game and it's Left 4 Dead, so we got to have an AK-47. That's one of the iconic weapons. Uh, but then the gun they added was, in fact, not an AK-47. Well, again, most times that they tell you it's an AK-47, it's an AKM. Um, the big difference is in the receiver. I can't tell you how it's different. I just know it is. Um, uh, it seems to be the same case for... It is much easier to look up information about this on the Left 4 Dead wiki than it is on the Back 4 Blood wiki. Which uh, is yeah, kind of a... I mean, it's, it's, it's a statement telling. about how old a fan base is, but it's also kind of a damning statement about the state of the modern fan wiki. Uh, for the AK in Left 4 Dead... It was modeled initially after the AKMN from 1959, which was a modernized version of first-gen AKs. At least, again, according to yeah. the Left 4 Dead wiki. However, the developers said when they were designing it, and they specifically used uh, the AK-74 as a, as a visual reference. Not one-to-one, -one, however, as a like design inspiration when they were making the appearance of the gun. So if you have huh. that... I do that have an AK-74. Yes, that may be a little closer, because if these are the same developers, they might have... Uh, I'll, I'll look up the, the AK-47 in Back to Blood again. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the uh, the N tells us. Right now. Uh, 
this looks a little closer to the one in game, except the one in game has like a metal bit, kind of like a, on a, on the other gun that you had. You had the custom rail on the one on your right hand. Yeah, uh, a little metal bit on the end that I don't think the gun on your left is holding, unless it's just at a weird angle. No, uh, I can add a, I can add. The... Yeah, it's, it's not. Yeah, there's, it's missing like the rail mount and stuff for, uh, for. Yeah, we can. Uh, yeah, you can mod that on. Yeah. We can even if we wanted to, we can put the the nonsense the Romanian one. Oh goodness! Uh, yeah. yeah, now you're starting to get a little closer to the in-game appearance. Yeah, the only uh, issue with using the 74 in this case is the 74 takes a smaller cartridge modeled more after five five six. Ah, uh, yeah. uh, that's actually something someone mentioned. Is that technically the ammo in game? I think in both Back for Blood and Left for Dead is at least the listed ammo is technically incorrect for the gun. Uh, let's see. Yeah, the so, AK, so they, we, they fire different caliber bullets. Yeah, yeah, 5.45 versus 7.62, both by 39, so this, they're the same length. Correct, you are, you are completely correct, I'm impressed. Uh, wow. Uh, also, shout outs to ArtStation, the one place I can actually go to find high res renders of very hyper specific things from video games. Yep. Um, so I'm looking at the gun now. Yeah, this is a lot closer to the one in game. It's not one to one. It's not. It's not close. Uh, the one in game also has a bit of a higher front, like the little metal uh, scope bit there. It's a little taller in game. Oh, like the, I think, the 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 sight. Uh, yeah, at the at the uh, near the barrel, near 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 the. Oh, the the front sight. Yeah, uh, it's a little taller in game, I think, just to give it a, a more functional stock iron sight, since that wasn't a design concern for Left 4 Dead, but it was for Back 4 Blood. Yeah, they, they probably tweaked the proportions on the uh, on the, the front here to kind of bump this up and then bump this up, so that way they're more prominent and easy to read, because I'll, I'll be the first to tell you, and you can probably see it in the footage for yourself, um, not the most legible iron sights. They are kind of very low profile. Try throwing an iron sight on there and watch as it makes the entire experience truly so much worse. Or like a, a, a not a scope, a, what are those called? The reflex, the, the reflex yeah. I also, yeah. I need a, a spare 74 because we've decided we're firing the 74 now, I guess. I would say both because the reality of the matter does seem to be the gun that exists in Back for Blood is a mishmash of almost correct things well, that were designed with functionality in game. For and I mm -hmm. don't disagree. I don't disagree with that. I will also say if we are firing the 74, um, I much prefer the 74 to the M. 762 by 39 is a, a bit rough coming out of this. Uh, the recoil, yeah. I feel, is a bit too much. Um, you know, we, we can we can really go ahead and make this like the, the back for blood um, special. We can put the, the long barrel on it. We. <laughs> okay. The yes. scope. Yes. So let me see everything you can attach to the dumb to the dumb AK in Back for Blood specifically. I'm so excited. Yeah, uh, the AK. barrel. We we could do a compensator now or a suppressor. We'll, we'll throw a compensator on here. Barrel optic. You can you can put custom mags in this thing too. Do you got any like um, really oh. really goofy goofy magazines? Oh, you know what? Yes. Um, or we can. Yeah, we got one of the ones that's got like the the red tier mod, so it's it's one of the low capacity magazines, and we have See, to hope the, to find a larger one. Here's the problem of the world we live in: is if I search back for blood AK mods, it brings up game mods. Yeah. Uh, which, to be fair, once again, most of the mods I'm seeing are actually people adding back for blood games into Left 4 Dead 2. Which, uh, which is, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm seeing designs with the skins they have too from Art Station, and yeah, it really does. From all the guns I'm seeing here, it really does feel like this was a weapon designed to look like what a gamer would expect an AK to look like and work like in a video game, and yeah. is a mishmash of several different AK designs and iterations. Yeah, it's it's kind of the platonic ideal of a Kalashnikov. We're not going exactly. for any particular one. We're going to kind of mix and match for what suits our experience. And with that in mind, even though I've kind of made this thing uh, a little too nonsensical, it's actually perfectly fine. 
I've turned yeah. the site down to 3x. It's totally usable. I think that's what the ACOG defaults to in game, and that might be 4. Um, Th this does look like something that would have a, have a sticker on it that says Milady, uh, if I'm being honest. <laughs> so I'm... <laughs> like, this This is truly, like, gu like gun nut gun bro shit. This is, this is tactic cool to the next level. Yeah. I like that we have all of these rails I'm not using. Mm. I respect this, but I like this. Absolutely. That That's totally fair. So I'm going to um, say respect. Re this respect is a very like spectrum. Yeah, this is a very respectful, very versatile uh, 10 out of 10. I I mean, that probably doesn't reflect how good it is in, in Back for Blood. <laughs> Um, mostly because when I find the AK, I don't find the AK. I find the RPK, which we will cover in a bit, but... I I personally find the AK to be a good go-to because I'm used to Counter-Strike. However, I always prefer, in every situation, uh, the next weapon that we're pulling up, which is the M16A4. Oh yeah, this game has both an M16 and an M4, which is... I appreciate, because I prefer the M16 to the M4. They're both good, but I, I prefer the M16. This one doesn't have the carry handle by default, does it? Uh, in my head, it was going to be either that or they were going to just put one of, like, like one of these. I'll also it. say that once again, it does seem... No, that's not on there. But it also does seem that the little front... Uh, the front iron sight is in game a little bigger than this one for okay. again the same reasons because in game that front sight is considerably taller than the carry handle you just put on. Okay, it. so uh, it's I, it's almost kind of like AA12 esque, like sits way high up for the sake of but readability. It's the same principle that applies to in fighting games, uh, the characters being designed with really big hands and feet. Of, ah. That is going to be the thing that the player is going to need to pay the most attention to. When you're aiming down sights and back for blood, if you don't have a scope, if you don't have a reflex sight, you're just using what the gun comes with by default. And if it's non-functional in a traditional gameplay sense, then that is going to bounce off of players. If back for blood was going for full realism, they would probably adjust how the sights work for each gun to be reasonable and realistic yeah. for that. But they're going for a certain experience. Yeah. Uh, and then there's also kind of the logistic issue of, you know, building site zeros um, mm -hmm. in a traditional game, especially when it doesn't really need it. So if these do sit up, thus throwing your zero off, but all of your bullets are calculated based on a random vector added to here, it doesn't correct. really make a difference. Um, you know, you can fudge the position of the uh, the crosshair or even the bullet, as 343 has taught us, with the <laughs> auto aim and halo <laughs> um, to make up for that. Anyways, uh, we have many an option for uh, a magazine for this thing. Absolutely. The magazine it has by default is a 20 mag size, but I do believe you can upgrade. Really? It's 20 round, huh? Yes, uh, but a lot of the guns you find in-game are low magazine size by default. It's also worth noting that the yeah. magazine on the gun physically is a full length magazine. However, it does default to 20 rounds. So if like, you dump, like, like if this. You dumped 10, correct. If you dumped 10 rounds out of this, that would be what's in game, <laughs> which is truly dumb. Like that is that is purely going off of what the player is anticipating it looking like, as opposed to what actually makes sense. Oh, it was already loaded! Oh, dear. Okay, well, now we have the correct number of... correct number of rounds. Give or take. Um, and again, you can you can expand the magazine Yeah. in Back for Blood. They won't let you do this. Yeah, the, the extended mags give plus 25 to plus 75 um, uh, depth the magazine. I don't know what that's called. Oh, Bolts? percentage? Percentage, yeah. Uh, and okay. then... Plus 75%, are... hold on. 20. So, 75% more of 20 is... Uh, 75% more. 35? Is that 35? I think that's right. We'll just pull out the 60 rounder and call it the extended mag. 
yeah, that's the thing, is design-wise, uh, the magazines in Back for Blood, at least in the icons, and I think also in-game, are the very specific visual language that they use. Um, now, um, the, I don't mean to cut you off, but is, absolutely going. is the M16 in Back for Blood full auto, or is it burst? If I recall correctly, it's burst, or at least that's how I use it. Um, for purely because I, I enjoy... Uh, having that first fire. It is three rounds first, yeah. Okay, well that's actually correct. The M16, at the very least, the A4, um, was only ever burst. Yes, and that is that is how I like to use these weapons. I, I play firing bursts at the head or the feet, uh, depending on the situation. Sometimes I'll fire at feet to, like, uh, slow enemies down, depending on if the game allows that or not. And, uh, in Back for Blood, uh, this is my favorite kind of, if I don't have a sniper, my favorite kind of function weapon. The one that, from pretty much any range, I can just do, and then know that it's done. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you kind of play the game like, oh, you know, here uh, here comes a, a horde. Yeah, exactly. I, and I, then... I, I, tr I don't try to spray bullets unless I have, like, a minigun or something. Or, yeah. Because those are fun, but... Yeah, you kind of, sp I mean, not really spray, but kind of dump lead into the crowd, and then, you know, here comes Tall Boy, so then the you can I, you can aim and... The way I see it is that grenades are for crowds, and, and the, the gun is for target elimination. That's fair. But what, what I was saying about the visual language of the upgrades of the mods in this game, is the attachments they're called, they're called in-game, is... The extended magazines have the kind of banana clip aesthetic that that it, uh, a lot of people would be used to, of like a longer mag that bends outward and forward. Yeah. And then the ones that increase reload speed are fast mags that have a little grip at the bottom for faster reloading. This. Uh, yes, exactly. I believe and, actually the fast mag, um, at least the icon, is pretty much modeled after the HK 416's stock magazine, which uh, is. It has it has vertical lines instead of horizontal lines, but yes. Okay. Generally speaking. Uh, but all of this is to say that, again, for the sake of gameplay, they, they, you know, mush together some things that don't technically work together in real life in order to make it make more sense for the visual language of video game fire. And I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, I would add some of this junk to it, but it really doesn't need it in this configuration. Your stock's nice and solid. Yeah. The platform's pretty stable. You have... Just an absolute mile of rail. I tend to use a reflex sight when I use these, if I can find one. Uh, or, and sometimes I'll use, sometimes I'll use the um, suppressor on this, but I prefer mm -hmm. the M4 for the suppressor. Yeah. Which we'll get to in a moment, because we have another gun between those two. Yeah, so for this one, this is, I would say this one's another one of like the the really serviceable, like, very kind of top of the food chain tens. It's it's just service. Yeah, it's just a tent. really it's a really good platform for activity. <laughs> Let's get the scar out of the way. Scar H. Um, never been a big fan of the scar. I don't know why. These games sure love using the H version. Yeah, let me see if there's a story behind that. But keep going. And it seems to, yes, very much be one of the most common portrayals of, of a gun. There's also, for, for Payday, for instance, um, the scar in that game is a scar, is a, is a modified scar H. Yeah. I'm guessing it's just because of the visual language of guns. Um, Cause I don't well, see any particular it... legal issue here. It might also be they use the H versus the L, because once you get out of the brass tacks, this is effectively just, you know, like the M4, the M16 in terms of workings. It's it, it, it loads a magazine, it loads a it loads a Stanek magazine that fires 556. Five, so, you know, as you know, you could have a million guns to do this, but this is kind of like the modern, like this is the modern thought of this is like the modern idea of like the 762 battle rifle I you know see, we're firing I the see. same kind of round as like the m14 and stuff like that but we have you know all these rails and it looks super modern you know it's not the most sleek but it's sleek where it counts 
got a fun silhouette and design, so. Uh, how does it feel to use it? Um. Like, even if the barrel's a little wrong, it's mostly right. It's, uh. It's very rough, given the fact that it's 762 yeah. NATO. So let's, you know, put on some of our our fun additions here to, uh... Okay, where is the barrel mount? It, it sees the barrel mount, but it only stays for, like, a frame. Uh, yes, you can mount, mount uh, mods on it in-game, so it should, in theory... What if you just held the suppressor at the front and shot through it? Try, try, I'm just curious what that would do. <laughs> oh, there you go! Hey, you got it! Kind of speared it on there, but... You have to screw it on. Yeah, you screw the you screw That's all the suppressors so on. Oh, we can we can take this a step further. Let me just grab like whatever. Um, I probably have uh, to grab a map. I, I recognize this gun. Was this a sniper rifle in Payday? Is that why I recognize it? Yes, it's also um, Agent Forty Seven's infamous yes, sniper yes. rifle. Okay, let's oh, grab something oh. that's a little easier to put a. <laughs> okay. Or maybe so. it's the suppressor that's the issue right now. Well, uh, I don't think I don't think so. I think it was just that that whole like break at the front. So if you don't screw it on, um, Does it just put flat. Yeah, it, it'll it'll fall off. <laughs> yes. Oh, this game is so good. That's so wonderful. <laughs> yeah. Anton it's like really loves with a suppressor. Yeah, you get An one shot. Anton loves doing or any gun and overkills the Walking Dead. <laughs> you get one shot and that suppressor explodes. Yeah. I. Uh, there. I mean, honestly, we could talk about that game until the sun explodes and still not have, like, still have a lingering, like, hey, what was up with Thought? Hey, have you ever done an episode of this about Overkill's The Walking Dead? No, because you can't find information about that game anymore. Uh, I still own the game, but I don't know if, um, if I can even launch it anymore. Because it because it was online only. <laughs> it's like literally, it's like the meme of like the the soldier standing over the kid. Like, you are the soldier preventing that game from going to become lost media. <laughs> well, here's and the it, thing. And it's like two. It's, it's like two videos about it. Yeah, it's it's like me and Sir Crackerball. They're the only two people who who are like trying to preserve this game, except from different perspectives. Because I'm starting to question. I'm an archivist at heart, and I'm starting to question if something should be archived. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Anyways, the scar. Uh, speaking of speaking of scars on the on the industry, uh, the scar uh, kicks like a horse, and <laughs> even with the suppressor, like that helps a ton. It, it, there's only so much it can help. <laughs> what's your what's your rate of fire uh, that you've got on this particular scar? So here's the fun thing: they are based on the actual like real world fire rates, but they don't list them. Uh, is and it relatively slow? Oh, yeah, well, we can test that. Because what I'm saying is, uh, according to the in-game description in Back for Blood, the scar has a slower than standard rate of fire, which makes the fact that it kicks like a horse interesting to me. Okay, well, now, this is peculiar. I'm not even trying to aim, though. Kind of just, like, ram this up against me, and then... Hmm. So it does seem a little slower, but the fact that it's kicking that hard is interesting to me. Uh, I get I'm, I'm why it would do that from a gameplay perspective, but at the same time, like, I don't know. Maybe it's just because I don't really like having to stop and carefully aim in games like this where you're surrounded by tons of enemies. Um, um, it, it kind of people, does feel like I'm getting overwhelmed, so. People are, are generally saying about the Scar and Back for Blood that if you're comparing it to the AK, the AK is better for longer bursts of fire than the scar yeah uh, however if you're going for accuracy burst firing distant targets the scar wins out i mean yeah if we just do like yeah absolutely but that's not that's not necessarily your style no it, it, it's a hard style to keep up in a horde shooter like back for blood you know absolutely. this is really you need like people coordinating in front of you so that way you can focus and I play this game with the bots who spend their entire time dropping ammo and medicine for me, so. <laughs> and have bottomless ammunition, it seems like. So what would you rate the scar overall? It's, um... Hmm. It's, it's, oh. it's definitely a, a seven of some description, but no, that's it, perfect. Seven yeah. of some description. 
I've written yeah. all these down, so you'll have this at the end. Nice. Um, any of the ones where I feel like it's not worth numbering, like, I just don't feel like I have uh, enough I, info. Um, I, I just do, like, here's my final thoughts on them. I did that with Just Cause, and there's a lot of them that it's just, like, I trail off and Dan leaves it. I wrote for the Uzi. Eh. <laughs> yeah! The M4 carbine. Hooray, you've already got sights. So all you need is a magazine. Um, a I, I assume this one's got plenty of rails. Uh, yeah, plenty of rails, and it's a full auto AR-15, uh, uh, which you, you probably heard about on the news. So we'll try to avoid that. Yep, it fires fully automatic 50 caliber rounds. Those uh, are truly entirely tr different terms, fellas. Yeah, truly and entirely. Uh, this gun has received quite the reputation in the world. However, within the context of video games, it's usually understood to be the very customizable, very modifiable, very versatile assault rifle. Yeah. Uh, it claims it has very low damage in game, which I believe is true. Um, and that's easy to control. So essentially it is designed to just be like the utilitarian, easy to use, hard to master sort of weapon. Let's see if it lives up to that reputation. Uh, top of it, it was on full auto. Does it, it does have a safety on? Ah, oh, there we go. No, I forgot to take the safety off. I do kind of feel like everyone has seen the carbine. I will say the in-game default barrel is much longer than this, which I am starting to see as a consistency. And I think that may be part of the design and philosophy of the game was to I guess maybe from the perspective oh. of... Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh, I should have locked the ability to pick these up. How do you feel about the M4 carbine overall, even though because of its ubiquity both in the world and in media, it kind of feels like we're talking about the MP5 here, where it's like... Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. You know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you know, out of 10. Yep. Uh, the ranch rifle's up next. Oh, right. I forgot those were considered rifles. Uh, do you remember what size magazine the... Uh... Uh, in game, it has a 15 magazine size by default. Of course they so, picked it... the size that didn't <laughs> exist. <laughs> Doesn't exist. No. There, again, there's a visual language to, to uh, guns in video games that I don't know if it's based off of real life guns, but there is this idea of precision weapons being rounded to fives or tens that, mm -hmm. that is, uh, is very common in games. Uh, I don't I don't know what the design philosophy is behind it. There may be a reason for it. Uh, I'm seeing. People really like this weapon. People really enjoy the ran the ranch rifle. That's impressive, because um, I've actually never done any of the snipers, but I will I'll have to consider this one. So it seems, generally speaking, uh, the idea is it's a good DMR. Uh, uh, like it's a good balance between a rifle and a uh, like a, a, a full rifle and a yeah, so like, a sniper. Yeah, so like kind of at like this kind of a range. You can hit the weak points decently good enough. You know, you can you can take out like immediate threats. Um, but, but then, you then when you have the time. long, yeah, when you have the option of longer range, you've got uh, a good platform for that. Which reminds me, we can go ahead and yes. Oh, it needs a rail, I would assume. Or... Oh, you're right. I will also say uh, for a fun little fact about the ranch rifle, the etymology on that seems to be or is that entomology the one that isn't bugs uh seems to be uh <laughs> the, that <laughs> the one that isn't bugs the doofenshmirtz does the exact same thing in one of the episodes of Wait, phineas and ferb it is, that is. A oh no i stole phineas and ferb bit what have i done uh but at least again according to some renders which is most of the research you can do in five seconds uh the ranch rifle is specifically a, a California compliant version of the Mini 14, hence the title. The idea being you could use it like on a range or on a ranch. 
Uh, so it is it is specifically designed a little weird and non-standard so that it could meet requirements that the Mini 14 wouldn't have by default. Yeah, so uh, like probably like this uh, heat shield around here with like the gaps in it, they probably have to use a different front because this kind of a thing got into a lot of hot water with like federal and even state and local firearm laws. This is considered um, dangerous. It, so many of the gun laws are going for aesthetics rather than the actual performance, and that's its own can of worms. Yeah. Um, but, no, I, I, I get it. Um, this one, we do have access to a, a kind of almost EBR version. Um, it's got a pistol grip and a <laughs> flipping uh, a, a weird compact stock, yeah. Yeah, you can fold it up and uh, yeah, now your concealment's up. Yeah. Please, please put this in the trash. <laughs> oh, wait, no, you're putting it on the table, right. Hang on, what are we rating it? Well, we're rating this one. Oh, we're rating this one. Uh, what are we rating it? Um, well, let me go ahead and... Um, like, I get people it. People like it in-game. People yeah. like it in-game. So, it seems... It also seems like there is some debate about the in-game weapon stats and the way they function, so there are some people yeah. who... Yeah, um, I, I don't know if you've ever seen how the firepower stat works. Uh, I've not, no. It is it is a whole ordeal that combines so many things, like bullet stumble, penetration, the actual so, damage so it, numbers. It skips out on giving you the nitty-gritty numbers and gives yeah. you numbers that still feel a bit nitty-gritty, but aren't nearly as difficult to parse. Yeah. However, in doing so, they've smoothed, o they smoothed over a lot of the nuance yes. of the data. And then they did a bunch of changes to how the, the weapon fall-off um, vectors work, so... Like, weapons will fall off, like, slowly, and then hit a certain, like, break point, like, 10 meters, and drop down to a lower tier. There's, like, so I many, see. there's so many, like, weird bits and pieces about how Back for Blood's weapon systems work that is just completely invisible to the player. Okay, I see. So it's all, it all happens in the background. So yeah. You a good shot with it, and it does seem like a popular choice for people, just as a best of both worlds option between yeah. sniper and assault rifle. So, how are yeah, you feeling? I, I get it. Um, and I, I I dig the look, and I'm so glad it's it's back. Like, th this is what's back for blood. The ranch rifle, yes. which was in Left 4 Dead. Welcome back, old friend. Um, we missed you. Um, you're, you're a pretty solid seven. You're, you're, you're a good all-rounder. A good all-rounder seven. All right. Is, is Next. this the, the Phoenix? Yes, the Phoenix is the final one. Okay, so I'm a dummy and I forgot about the M14. Um, it's pretty good. Once you put some mods on it, it's fantastic. It's a solid gun. I would give it... I'd give it a 9. Both in Back for Blood and in H3. My head's full of rocks, sorry. Where you... You seem to have had a bit of a difficult time determining what this gun could be. You wrote down R700? So, it is... If I recall, it is either kind of uh, a Franken gun, or the weapon just does not exist in uh, H3. Um, but I felt the R700 here is good enough for for our sake. So, the Phoenix... I don't quite remember this gun, as a matter of fact, in Back for Blood. I'll this, have to look it up. This is kind of the midpoint between the uh, the ranch rifle and the the, the Barrett, which we are not covering because uh -huh. this game doesn't have that Barrett. We have other Barretts instead. So, it seems... This one's a lot more of like your traditional sniper rifle. Uh, I'm seeing people say Ruger American rifle. Is that is that what you're using here, or this is the 700? I don't quite know how. This is the Remington 700. I don't really know how that plays into the. Uh, I, I see Ruger American rifle being a lot of people's go-to comparison for this gun. Uh, well, we don't have that, so. Ah, oh, it's not. Oh, I see. Okay, so uh, don't don't complain in the comments because there's uh, we're doing what we can with it. Oh no, the the, the comments understand uh, substitutions like this. 
However, they they will absolutely nitpick like every small thing I say about a gun's history and effectively give me like like the the documentary about it, which I love. I love that the, there's this audience of people that are like, well, it's actually this and also that and also this and also that, without going, are you dumb? No, it's because my brain's literally full of everything else. So the moment I have to remember a gun fact, it's just. I'm trying to think back to when I read it um, on TV Tropes' Cool Guns page like three years ago. <laughs> so I'm realizing that I, I did use this weapon. This was the sniper I was using. It was either this or the ranch rifle that I was using a lot. I, it just didn't particularly stand out to me. Like, it just felt like a sniper rifle. And you uh, know what I gotta say about it? It's a sniper rifle? It sure is. I would give it an 8 just because it's it's decently accurate it, yeah, and it's decently good. powerful. It's it's not particularly interesting. It's just it's, a sniper rifle. It's a pleasure to have in class. Anyways, um, we will hit. very quick. We were very quickly um, to oh. make up for the fact that we can't actually fire uh, back to blood's anti-material weapon. We're gonna give one shot out of the Barrett um, that's in this game. This one's a semi-automatic Barrett, which is um, alarming and also big. And the scope only zooms out to eight times, so. Yeah, I believe the Barrett was my usual weapon that I had. I thought I thought there was another Sniple. Sniple? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. We're uh, done with the Sniples now. Uh, speaking of Sniples, you might recognize this, oh. this beauty. Coming to us yeah. from South Africa, or um, the Pillar of Autumn. Good grief! Yes, exactly. Okay, it took me a, it took me a second to land it. See, my favorite Halo is uh, ODST, so it's the one where the guns are a little more grounded. Oh yeah. Uh, so uh, maybe I'll, you'll recognize it if we bend the barrel backwards and apply like somebody <laughs> got bodied with it. Yeah, that's fair. So it got hit so hard with the sniper rifle that it bent in half. Yeah, those barrels oh, are made Romeo. out of solid steel. I don't want to know the force it takes to bend one into a flippin' cartoon U-shape. All right. All, All right. Righty. It's time for Mom. Mom's in the house. Mom is in the house, and she's got the Belgian, the hammered double barrel sawn off shotgun. Oh, I for I don't know why I forget that there is a character in this game called Mom. Listen, I will never forget that. I, from, from what, from, no, never mind. Anyways, uh, I was gonna say from one mom appreciator to another, but that sounds so bad. <laughs> uh, uh. In my head, I'm hearing it like, um, like a British PSA. From one mom appreciator to another. <laughs> what mother now, the problem with doing, uh, this kind of a double barrel is I need to shoot each one individually. We have two triggers, you see, and they're not linked together. Um, oh! So, but, in, but in game, are they? Do it, does it always fire both shots? It always or? fires both barrels. Now, we can ah. fix that. There is a gun in here that does fire both barrels. Uh, the problem is it's a bit large. Oh, I, It's a oh, bit that, large. That legit... That looks like the thing that got Shinzo Abe. <laughs> it looks like the doohickey. <laughs> so this is specifically modeled on the uh, the super shotgun from Doom. It's considered a meat yes. fortress weapon, but it's absolutely the super shotgun complete with sound yeah, effects. Yeah, I, I see it. And uh, oh, I could hear that through your microphone. It was it so loud. It even kicks you back a little bit. Yeah, once again. Yeah, uh, it moves you back a little. That's ooh. This thing is a beast. I've literally shot this. Like literally, I think this is what do they call this? Three gauge. <laughs> <laughs> what round are you? Two gauge. <laughs> two gauge. You go and get vault. So okay. that means of a pound of lead, they make two half pound balls, and that's the diameter of the barrel. <laughs> Is there not a reality in which you could put a piece of duct tape on both of these triggers in game, in the game, uh, to be able to fire them simultaneously? Okay, so technically speaking, um, how these work is they're, they, oh. they're linked in slightly different ways um, and they move at different angles. So taping them together, you would risk oh. misfiring one of the two. Interesting. Um, what you taught I, me something. Wow. Yeah, um, so how do you feel about the Belgian in general? 
I've Let's never see. used it because the idea of having, albeit one single powerful shot, uh, feels a little dangerous in a game where I'm constantly surrounded by enemies and don't want to be reloading. It does generally seem that people agree with you, that people think that it is so fun to use, it is good in certain situations, however, overall, it's not, it's not versatile enough. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that out because we'll be using shotguns for a bit. Um, I'm going to give this two more fires and then this is what we're putting on the table just because. Absolutely. Um... Every time it comes out, it has to... I mean, we have to celebrate it at least a little bit. <laughs> Seriously, is there a way I can... Okay, so... My finger's kind of at, like, the, where the control stick is. And this is absolutely... This is the length of my arm. Oh, I see. Goodness gracious. Big, chunky boy. Um, there are two-gauge uh, shotguns and rifles, but they're only used for, like, blasting debris out of kilns. <laughs> Um, it brings a lot of spectacle, but in terms of practicality, I'd rather have more shots than one powerful shot. So I'm going to give this like a, I'll give okay. this like a five. Sorry, I was just trying to segue to, uh, you know, what is good against zombies is uh, the train. Come on, ride the train on the 870 Express, the Remington 870. We have the Express 870, which it's kind of a, a little... A little tactical looking. We also have... We have a number of 870s. Jeepers. And the Let sad thing is... Let me see how close we can get to the in-game one. The sad thing is there's also a magazine for that 872. Uh, now, I will say there are skins. There's the Fort Hope Elite skin. If you bought um, the premium edition like some kind of fool, who, who would do that? Who me. would do something crazy like that? Uh, you. Yeah, uh, it's almost has... like, you know, it'd have to be the same kind of maniac that spend $60 on Raid World War II for the Golden <laughs> Garen skin. Uh, don't oh. worry, uh, it would also have to be the same person who did that twice to buy it for a friend also. Oh, uh, I, hey. I convinced Dan to buy Raid World War II, and he convinced me to buy Destiny 2 on PC. We could make an entire squad out of people who are convinced into buying Raid World War II and not. We could get enough people together to be able to play the game, but we wouldn't because nobody wants to. The one in your left hand seems to be almost identical to the Fort Hope skin version of the gun. Both work, yeah. but this one is at least closer to the one that's in-game proper. Uh, do I got a shell loaded? Oh, no, I do because it's 5 plus 1. Oh, five. So this is six. Yep. Six shots in this. Oh, because in game it starts at eight. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we have this much tube. I can actually pull out two shells. Uh, you'd have to extend it a little more. <laughs> I mean, it's not unfeasible. I can go ahead and load two more. Well, let me, let me see in in the load. Okay. So, uh, the in game one, the in game, uh, forest hope model even. The, there is a longer extension for where you load the shells. Like, it, it is flush with the barrel. Okay. Like, it, so the um, tube, these two tubes aren't offset, they are... Yeah, okay. they, are, they are at the same place. However, looking at this skin, I can't tell if they did it by having a longer tube or by sawing off the barrel. And the, perhaps there's a reason why this gun is limited to this one skin and they have a different, more reasonable looking version even if it is not available to us here mm -hmm. uh, for the for the one that's used for everything else. Like, it, it seems like there's a good explanation for that. Okay, I was about to say, this is kind of an uncomfortable fire. I gotta extend my arm a whole lot. But I'm learning I'm just a fool. I mean, I could grab it further back and then just do shorter strokes, but it doesn't... I could grab it further back and make shorter... You know, I could actuate the pump a shorter distance. But, uh... Hmm. So, uh, it also seems at some point they buffed the the Remington huh. in Back for Blood. Uh, it They increased its fire rate overall. Nice. Or, or, like, rather decreased the time between between shots. Decreased the time it takes by a little bit between shots. Uh, yeah. And... Increased, like, the, the, the fire... Well... 
probably decrease the number of frames between shots. I don't imagine the actual animation's faster, I just imagine they cancel it sooner. Uh, yes, also Back for Blood purposefully has uh, reload canceling for a lot of guns. Uh, there's, there's a lot of guns in that game where uh, the bullets enter the gun before the animation ends, and you can melee to interrupt it. Uh, and I think, I don't think there's any, if many guns that it's significantly faster for. However, it does allow you to, like, interrupt it to do something else. Like, say, switch to another yeah. weapon you can mm. fire with. It's probably used a lot more on, like, it's probably used a lot more on, like, no hope difficulty where, Absolutely. you know, every second counts, so... Because uh, I don't do you know if you've about seen it? footage of No Hope. People just kind of run. I'm not. Uh, I I have beaten all of the heists and Payday the heists on 145 plus, and that was that was done by hiding in corners and abusing the AI and then running. Yeah. So, well, I mean that's kind of just how you played the heist too. <laughs> well, yeah, but like the point being, a lot of those difficult for the sake of being difficult games come down to evolving a playstyle that revolves around abusing the game as much as yeah, possible. Yeah, ab ab abusing AI and minimizing activity, kind of. Absolutely. Uh, so how do you um, feel about the Remington uh, overall, though? The Express? Um, if, you know, it wasn't kind of tiring out my arm to fire, which I assume is just entirely my own user error, um, it's probably totally fine. You, you gotta have a pump action in a zombie game. I totally get it. I'll give it, I'll give it an eight. You know, you, you, you gotta have it. If they didn't have one in this game, there would be riots. Fair. They, they wouldn't be long lived because you know, it was back for blood, but. Oh, so we've got an interesting, we've got an interesting shotgun next. It seems to be controversial in, in, the, in the community. Up up next is coming the TAC-14. This is the, the short one, isn't it? Yes, aka the uh, Sawnoff 870, or, which we don't have uh, access to, so we're gonna substitute a a chopped M500. Yep. Yeah, this uh, thing. I love this thing's model, especially like standing here. Like, look at the shine. Ooh, that is fun. I've got a flipping 3070, and this is the most interested I've ever been in the reflection. <laughs> So it seems like people who like slower shotguns enjoy the Tac-14, but generally speaking, it's seen as not as useful unless you're on higher difficulties where actually, yes, your damage does need to be that stupidly high. Huh, so it's stronger but slower? Yeah, so it's kind of like on lower difficulties. Again, this is just inferring from people discussing it. The 870 is preferred in its place because it's more versatile, but on the higher difficulties where you actually need to put things, like like it would take two or three shots from the 870 to put down something that would take one shot from this. Mm -hmm. uh, in those situations, it's more useful because you just need the thing to, to be dead on the pull of the trigger. Yeah. So kind of trading versatility for power where it's needed. This is kind of overkill on recruit and even veteran. But then you get into the higher difficulties where that, you know, might body shot a ridden who keeps standing and running at you and you just gotta go. Absolutely. Oops. So uh, this is where this comes in. Which is odd given the fact that there's physically less gun. You'd think this one would in my head, if you asked me to balance this, I'd give it weaker shells to imply that you're using a lower pressure cartridge and thus there's less recoil because to make up the fact you don't have a stock mm. um or you just make it kind of the faster like emergency option like it like it switches out faster and you could like buffer a shot in the swap so you you have a shot ready to go as soon as it's out that's my wow. thought but i will you know, also say throw. inexplicably there is a mod for it in game that is a long barrel mod oh, for yeah. your sawn off shotgun, which is yeah. very funny to me. Yeah, the, the long barrel can go on many things. <laughs> oh my, oh my. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, they've they've sawn the stock off. <laughs> now, I will say this if we used this one, which has a stock, <laughs> you know. Ah, oh, we yeah. put it back together again. This is just like, we, we've become Frankenstein. 
Yeah, we've we've created a new gun out of a smaller gun. Oh uh, wait, we were supposed to raid it. Oh no, we've got this one. Um, okay, so how do you feel about it overall, though? I don't know if I jowl with how it's been balanced, but I would also say if you're in a situation where the ridden are real, I don't think you're gonna sit there and hem and haw between the two of these. You'll pick one up. Yeah, so, you'll, you'll pick up whichever one you have available to you. If you have a choice, it's just yeah. it comes down to the the Remington is better for longer term lasting, and this is better at shorter term. Yeah, big damage. Yeah, this is this is like your burst damage option. You'll probably have something like the bow or a melee, um, absolutely, in your secondary, and you're using that more. And then when you need the when you need the big burst of damage. You know, die, ogre, blam, haha. This was oh. loaded, I should've. Yeah, please be, please, please be careful. You're, why aren't you putting all these in a gun safe afterwards? Okay, um, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna give the sawn down a seven, just because I feel like th there's, there's more room on this one. It, it, this one's totally serviceable, you know. It's a seven, you know. It, it is a seven. You know. If it was actually bad, it'd be lower, but it's not, so it's not. Upcoming is the AA-12. Oh, no, I'm thinking of something else, um, but the AA-12 is very fun. Uh, I will say, I am not personally a big fan of auto shotguns in games, not because of any particular reason other than it's just not my play style. However, the AA-12 is, I always make an exception for the AA-12. Yeah. They, they went, you know what? We're just going to make the whole thing a recoil spray. And I respect it's that. It's so fun. It's so creative. It is also, as far as I know, very, very cheap and also, like, works under most circumstances. Is that right? It's pretty reliable. I don't know about the pricing, but I know because of the huge giant recoil springs, it's one of the few guns you can actually oh. dual wield in real life. Oh, wow. And also, to be clear, on... Um, uh, cheap to produce is what I mean, not cheap to purchase. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I mean, it's a polymer body with metal innards. It's not going to, you know, we're not setting the world on fire here with, like, you know, walnut wood and dolphin tears. Yeah, we're talking about everyone's favorite, the auto shotgun that for, I'm going to say, seven years in games, I did not know was an auto shotgun until somebody told me. This was pre-payday. Uh, uh, but... But, like, when I played Killing Floor and I was like, shooters that had the, the A12 in them, I always used it like a shotgun. I would fire individual shots. And then eventually someone told me, you know, you can just hold down the trigger, right? I'm like, what? I can? <laughs> Science and... evolved to allow me to do that? Yep. Yes. <laughs> um, shotguns exist in a kind of a weird liminal space in games where they're kind of a self parody. Shotguns yeah. in games don't operate like normal shotguns. You know, the idea is you have, you know, a nice amount of shot that can travel a long distance and maximize Correct. percent is, chance on a hit. That is that, that is exactly the design. As opposed to it being crowd control, it, it is designed for making it as easy as possible to take down a specific target from like short, me and medium, and starting long range. Not like really long, yeah. not actually long range, but well, like- Well, that's, that's why like the Duck Hunters use shotguns. Yes, and, and also that's why it's popular for home defense is it's like just, I need something okay. that will, that will be the thing that stops whatever I'm shooting at. Yeah, I'm hitting, I'm hitting these targets quite nice. Um, but in video games, it's kind of, it's become almost like, um, like how they treat flamethrowers, you know? Yes, instant kill yes, yes, yes. and then it, and then it you know instant Confetti. kill and then at this point it's like vague yeah, cosmetic damage and then at this yeah. at that range you're effectively just coughing on them and that's actually nowadays not, coughing on them is a little more dangerous not only is that not accurate to how shotguns work. Mm -hmm. it, it, it fits a role within a video gaming context. And yes. I, I've been talking this whole video about how I appreciate when they make changes that may not make sense for real life, but it makes yeah. sense in a gaming context. And uh, I, GameSpot's loadout video does a great job explaining that that's why shotguns work the way they work in video games. I, but I'm still going to say that I'm not a fan of it, only because I think we're at a point where games are mainstream enough that 
purporting the idea of shotgun is a big blast that will kill things at close range, but at long yeah. range is fine, might actually be bad for be people's gun safety. Be a harmful stereotype to yeah. instill in people that this and, blows and like, people. I didn't, I didn't think my shotgun could kill someone at like 40 feet. Like, yeah. it's designed to. Yeah, like the idea that this blows them away at point blank, but you know, past a certain range, we don't even simulate the damage sells a flawed idea like we could actually from here you know we could shoot at that target or this uh, poster and then go check our spread and each and every one of these bullet marks is lead entering your body yeah exactly and you're not you're not thinking about like especially if you're like a dumbass kid say like oh yeah you know kid William Tell is like a game kids will play. Oh, where right. They... Yes. Oh, good. I'm so glad you're telling this kind of a story. That's what kids are like. We used to give kids darts. Why are we purporting the idea that there is a version of guns that are the safe, fun guns? Not even darts. <laughs> we gave them jarts. Yeah, we, we gave we gave lawn darts to kids. Why are we why are we also having in our products and video games this this version this of reality? Yeah, this this flawed stereotype of a of a device designed to kill. If you're um, going to if you're okay, I won't I won't go too far into this because I am gonna get up on my soapbox and I don't know when I'm gonna get down. Anyways, <laughs> so I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bring it back. My, my qualm about the AA12 is you have to actually. Um, you mount the magazine onto a rail and slide up, which is very stressful to do um, in oh, real life. Um, I see. When you're panicking and you're kind of just like, okay, well, oh, here we go. Yep, that's what it's like. I've been there with take and hold so many times. I, um, I have seen a video uh, of someone stepping out of a pool they were fully submerged in, loading the AA-12 and firing it. And I remember, I saw that video years and years and years ago, but I remember even when I saw it back then, the thing that stood out to me was, it's impressive the gun was able to do it, but also, wow, it took you a good two seconds to load it because you couldn't, you just kept clicking it and couldn't get it on. Yeah. So I'm gonna give this a nine, and literally the only thing holding it back is how you affix the drum. Slash, you know, normal box magazine, because this does take a normal magazine. It's a very sad magazine that makes the AA-12 look kind of, um, bland. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, but I get why it exists, but again, you have to contend with that rail, and if, you know, you're covered in... Say, you, if you're, you're covered in... If you're covered you're in ridden guts and you're trying to jam that yeah. in there, you're, you're not doing that. But what I'm saying is, you at home, uh, if you've ever used a Nintendo Switch uh, and you've tried to put the Joy-Cons on the rails, you know how irritating that is? Now imagine the situation like 50-fold. <laughs> yeah, you're in a live fire scenario, but you have to charge your Joy-Cons. <laughs> Do it. Yeah, you... Listen, if I don't get to play Tears of the Kingdom before the apocalypse happens, I'm gonna scream. Uh, into the void, because no one's there, because everyone died from the apocalypse. Anyways, you know what's good for an apocalypse? Um, the Super 90. Okay, this is the one I love. Every single time this... Not to spoil anything, but every single time this appears in a tryout, it gets a 10 out of 10. Yes, yes, classic, classic. I love this gun. I love this um, gun anytime it's in a game. I enjoy that this shotgun is generally understood to be the, the function one. The one that even at range, it's still good in games. This is, uh, I believe, in Left 4 Dead. I might be wrong. This might be a different gun I'm thinking of, but in Left 4 Dead... It is in Left 4 Dead, yeah. Uh, wasn't this called the Tactical Shotgun? It was either Tactical or Chrome. No, no, the Chrome I Shotgun's will... a Tier 1. Tactical, yeah. Left 4 Dead 2 Tactical Shotgun. I'll double check that to be sure I'm not crazy. Because there were two Tier 1 and two Tier 2, I think. Uh, sorry, it was called the Auto Shotgun, but Auto yes, Shotgun. Other, tactical uh, Shotgun was, called... was the Spass, wasn't it? No, no, it's still the Tactical Shotgun. Uh, uh, there is also the Combat Shotgun. That's the that's the Spass you're thinking of. Oh, uh, okay. But the Auto Shotgun, or uh, people call it the Tactical Shotgun to, to differentiate it from the combat shotgun is the is this weapon yes uh this is this was one of my favorite weapons to use in left for dead uh well, and indeed i loved in back for blood as well and you'll be pleased to report in you'll be pleased to hear that i must report in h3 vr it is a beaut as well fantastic it's 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 a very stable and comfortable platform 
the, the stock folds up for maximum fun factor. Uh, fun fact, in some video games, that action costs $12,000. Um, <laughs> I love the sights. They're easy to read. The front sight, you know, it, it looks a bit much, but for this kind of a weapon, it's totally fine. Um, you know, it, it's, it's choked down to a decent amount that I can reasonably hit distant targets with ease. Absolutely. Um, and you don't have a, a annoying magazine rail to try to contend with. You, you just slap them in there, and it goes, cool. What's this? Mixed match shells? Oh, you have a dragon's breath in there for some reason? Is that a slug? I don't care. Let's roll. Which... I do see... I do see people saying that the tactical shotgun is actually not that accurate. I see, I have a different memory of it in Left 4 Dead. Maybe I'm also thinking of Counter-Strike, but... Um. Okay, yeah, I had that backwards in my head. It's actually the spas that is. That is the um. More accurate of the two. Uh. Huh, and this goes to show you just how much of lower level Left 4 Dead I've played. I don't notice a difference between this pass and the M1014. I feel like most of the weapon choices within a tier feel cosmetic, but I've never played it on expert, so. Fair enough. Uh, but either way, how do you feel about the Super 90? I mean, it's as far to the right on the table as it can get. <laughs> okay, that's a that's a good, that's a, that's yep. a... This is the one moment where being far right earns you something oh, nice. <laughs> thank you. I was literally writing down far right, but the good kind out of 10. Uh, and then marking that as a 10. <laughs> yeah, no, th this thing is functionally beautiful. Um... All right, now we've got now we've got some heavy weapons to get through. Up oh next boy. is the M two four nine saw. That means squad automatic weapon. However, you'll notice there's not a squad uh, automate in this weapon. It's kind yeah, of just yeah. There ain't no squad here. It's kind of just uh oh god. Okay, you didn't even play the DLC. I was like, who's the Irish guy with the mustache? They added his name in my head is Magic Dan, but that can't be right. Uh, Prophet Dan. Prophet Dan. I'll probably still go back and play it at some point, but yeah. I don't have Game Pass. I don't own the game currently. Uh, yeah, so. I, I saw that uh, when I started playing it just on my own recently. I'm like, the only person I knew who played the game didn't even buy it. That's a good sign. <laughs> well, see, that's the pr that's also an inherent problem with the longevity of games these days is if something is on Game Pass on release, there's a lot of people who may not buy it. They'll play it, get bored of it, and then be like, but I already played that, so I don't really want to justify spending 60 bucks on it. Oh no, I get anyway. that. Anyways, M249. <laughs> I just thought it was funny, just, it's on so many people in my friends list wish lists. Yeah. But I'm the only one who bought it. Uh, I did end up buying a copy of it for the PS4 for a friend of mine, so I, I do own that. Oh, nice. But, uh, it's also, it doesn't run great. I can hear your controller vibrating, oh my goodness. Yep, haptic feedback on every one of these bullets. Hooray! Yeah, this is the same thing that's like damaged my VR controllers over time. Um, well, it's not that intense. I've actually turned, I think, the haptic intensity down low. I'll say, uh, can you show me the side of this gun again? Uh, the, the bipod is deployed for it. They do deploy the bipod in the model for it. Ah. Uh. See, I would, but with how this game operates, it just, it'll stick to every surface. Oh, I see. So it's a, ah, uh, yeah, that's yeah. a little awkward. Yeah. Yeah, I get why it does this. It used to actually, you'd have to like firmly mount it and then it would just stay in place. But this uh, kind of more floaty method being able to pull can it you show me, off. Hmm? Show me the sock on this thing. So can you explain what the dent there is for? Is that for your arm? Uh, the the indent in in the uh, in the stock there uh, is that for your down arm? here or up here? Uh, yeah, up there. Like it's very pronounced on the on the one in in back for blood. Uh, it's like a little indentation on the on the yeah, uh, see, like okay. that kind of diagonal uh, shit. I'm curious uh, what that's for. In my head, I'm thinking that might be uh, like a cheek rest, but honestly, oh, oh maybe yeah. Honestly. I'm not too sure. I can actually, I could probably look into that and put the correct answer on the screen, but in my mind, yeah, given the way that kind of tapers in, 
that kind of curb, that kind of curb, to me feels like it, it'd be a cheek rest. Uh, problem is I don't. See, here's the thing: I don't want to look into this too much because the last thing I need is to get on a list for googling M two four nine stocks and <laughs> looking around. But uh, as far as I'm seeing, it is a comfort design. Yeah. But I don't know if that's for your where your head would go because I would worry I would worry that you would want not want your head resting on the gun at all uh, because of the amount of recoil. I think that might be where your hand or your wrist or your arm go. But also uh, at the same time, this could be like deployed like and then your, that your can your kind of absorb a lot of the. That's true. That's true. Hmm. So well, I, I can I can see it either way. We like it when our video game guns are just in the hands of big one man army type folk. And yeah. the M249 gives us a, a very interesting uh, take on all of that. Um, it has a static mag magwell. Whoa. Whoa, interesting. How do you feel about the M249? Because according to people in the Back for Blood wiki, the next weapon coming up is the far preferred weapon. Or not on the wiki, on the, on the subreddit, my bad. That's actually really interesting to me, because I, I prefer picking this up over the RPK because really? I like the fact that you get 80 rounds default and, you know, you can bump that up to 140 with the extended magazine. You know, I like the ability to just lay down sustained fire for a long period of time, and then because I have admin reload on my deck, I can then pull out my secondary for a few seconds, and then this is good to go faster than I could reload it conventionally. Fair enough. Uh, it does seem... I mean, I, I'm, I'm playing the game in a manner that I don't think anybody else was meant to play the game in. Yeah, I'm, th I'm thinking that your your particular play style leans better to this because this is a higher yeah. fire speed weapon, whereas the RPK yeah. has lower fire speed but is better for range, and that's yes. my preferred play style. Oh, yeah, and I can imagine on higher difficulties that is way preferred. Whereas I'm it's veteran. less difficulty and yeah. more that I I am such a low I'm such a lone person when it comes to games. You know my love for getting out the map. Uh, that also extends to PvP games where I like getting up to a weird place uh, to do something. Not oh, necessarily yeah. to camp, just to like be able to do it and be like that was fun and then go yeah. back down. Yeah. No, the I game. I get that. Um, probably don't need those anymore. Um, I get that. I just imagine so, on, like, Recruit and Veteran, you know, the normal difficulty Veteran. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, uh. Uh, a faster gun with more ammo absolutely makes sense for, uh, you know, most encounters. But then at, on higher difficulties like Nightmare and No Hope, you would want accuracy and range over just yeah. sheer overpowering the opponent with bullets. So I, it, I, I, I get It the, may be also be good sometimes to pick up sheer overpowering, but it's yeah. not as versatile it is only, yes. it is much better at sheer overpowering than the rk is but you the rk can do more things so how do you okay. feel about it overall so with that in mind um it's it's a biased nine <laughs> a biased nine i like that that's the, honest the, that's that, okay. yeah i'm gonna because... write down an i an ign nine <laughs> yeah it's full of technical issues it's lacking in enemy variety but i gotta give it a nine <laughs> It's full, it is full of technical issues, is the thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, but that RPK is up next. That, it's the yep. RPK. Uh, uh, this is a classic. Before we talk about the RPK, we have to go back to the AKM real fast. Oh. Um, so. Cause it, because of the magazine, is that why? Ah, uh, yes, because it, it does use that style of magazine in-game. And it's, uh, not even, it's not even that. This has its own bigger magazine. It's just, the RPK is effectively just the AKM platform, but designed, oops, designed as a, a squad-operated weapon. Absolutely. Like, I mean, most of the receiver is the same. The, the four is definitely the same. The barrel's a lot longer and bigger. The stock is definitely more befitting, you know, extended operations. So Now, very annoyingly, I will, I will point out that the RPK in Back for Blood um, has the magazine designed for more, you know, like easier loading and not the big barrel mag, easier to move around. Yeah, it's, uh, but it's also, one of these. 
but also it has a long uh, rail, a long barrel that is like a, a riveted with a bunch of holes in it. This is not the correct style of barrel. Uh, yeah, but as we also talked about, um, this game is the game it is. So, well, yeah, I'm not. Compl I'm not complaining. What I'm yeah. saying is, inexplicably, the gun in Back for Blood is like completely set up to be a mounted squad weapon. It has like the the carrying stock at the back that's that's like longer and bigger and has a better place to grip it. Uh, but and it even has a a uh, tripod mount or a bipod mount at the, at the front of of the really really long barrel it has. But it also has the single-use magazine, the magazine that you would more associate. I, I like. I can't think of any reason for that other than they wanted to be able to reuse models or animations. So here's the thing: the RPK does take regular um, AK magazines. It even has just kind of a, a more bog standard drum mag. Is that, that would, true? That would fit in uh, in the AK. If I go back and grab it, AKM. Okay. I can I can put I can put that magazine. See, yeah, I always this. associated the barrel with being the default, and this being a special case, like yeah. it was. With what the you're gun. thinking, what you're thinking about, is probably the RPD, which takes um, a much more conventional, like drum magazine. Ah, uh, I see. But either way, the point being, they did make the decision to list the RPK and make it specifically an LMG. Yeah. Uh, but then to still feed it with that style of magazine, which I yeah. think is interesting, especially when they have another LMG in the game that has those big barrel um, no, the, bags that you load the, the, the belt box, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't have a belt box. They they picked the one that takes the, the more conventional magazine and drum, um, which would ironically make this a much faster loading LMG as certain uh, level zero players of a certain video game are well aware of. But also, they still included all of the other really large yeah. accoutrements that would normally yes. be associated with it being a full squad gun. So it feels yeah. like a weird middle ground. Uh, but it is a good weapon, in functionality-wise, in in game. Yep. Um, I'm gonna go ahead real fast and grab my rail adapter. Absolutely. Um, just in case, and also get the AA-12 magazine out of my shoulder pocket. <laughs> and look at that. Um, you, it's a rifle, it's a sniper, it's a DMR, it's an LMG. It does everything you need. There's literally an AK for every situation. A through Z, AK, you got it. So how do you feel about the RPK? I get it. You get it? <laughs> I do. Um, once I had the suppressor on it and I had, you know, my ability to get a sight picture, like, if I'm just firing, like, right off the rail, yeah, no, this is just the AK all over again, which I'm not particularly keen on. Um, you know, for the individuals it was for, and given the specifications at the time of making a very cheap but very usable weapon using this kind of a caliber, I get it. But, you know, compared to the modern modern day like more convenient more comfortable options this is almost an unacceptable amount of recoil um, yeah but it, again it's but designed it, to be able to be used as an yeah. lmg yeah uh, the, yeah exactly yeah. just like that you know you, you drop this down and then you know we can now that didn't help my case terrifically but um yeah i get the i get the the intent though uh, yeah. anyways you you get it but not for you yeah, that's that's a very fair way to put it. I, I'm still gonna give it a nine. Um, okay. I totally get why people consider this, you know, superior given everything. Um, but if you were using the the whack ass uh, deck I'm using called L M G E L space uh, E M G E E, uh, which is full of all kinds of nonsense, um, it is effectively just designed for maximum yes, <laughs> whatever uh, you see. shall find yes to be. Um, uh -huh. having 140 rounds, and then all I need to do is swap weapons twice, and I've got 140 back, is ludicrously fun. And it's also why the AI has to keep stopping and going, I found some rifle ammo over here. When they very clearly didn't find it, they threw it on the ground so I could continue playing the video game. <laughs> I have um, found for us the next weapon. Are you ready? 
Oh, what is it? It's time to throw some flames. It's time to put some flames oh, on here. Oh, right! The flamethrower. I actually... I didn't unlock it. You can unlock it, but you have to beat... Um... Rot wieners, which is a whole, like, zombie scenario, which is very long-winded. Uh, um, so this is... This is the closest you'll probably be able to get to the one in-game, because, yeah. as is the case, uh, a lot of cheaply made or, like, game flamethrowers take these really basic concepts of how a flamethrower works. Yeah, not even and... how a flamethrower works, kind of just how a butane torch works, and they scale it up. Yeah, so yes. our two options for flamethrower are this one, which runs on uh, a can of industrial strength nail polish remover, and the one from Team Fortress. Well, the one from Team Fortress is definitely what I think of when I think flamethrower, which perhaps is, uh, is incorrect of me. However, yeah. uh, the one in game is much closer to uh, what you'd expect from from like throwing some pipes together and putting a canister of flammable fluid on it, which yeah. is to say uh, it is a cheap thing that shoots fire really hard and you have to be careful while using it. Yeah, I've actually gotten a hold of the flamethrower in Back for Blood exactly once and I quite enjoyed oh, it. Oh, in Back for Blood. Sorry, I have also used a flamethrower to be clear. As uh, a farming implement. License to Burn sounds like a very fun movie. I believe that is... Just conceptually fun to film. Lice... That seems like a Steven Seagal movie. Hang on, let me see. I mean, let me see. Uh, no, it's just looking up actual burn permits in my area, so no. Oh, okay. Uh, anyways, I was about to say, if that is a Seagal movie, I'm very disappointed that it had to go to the most boring action star imaginable. Uh, what, what was it? A right to burn or burn? What was what was the turn of phrase? I've already forgotten. My brain's License a... to burn? Yeah, license to burn. I'm going to look up Steven Seagal burn. Uh, I'm going to look up a list of Steven Seagal movies, and I'll see if anything even gets close. Okay. I'm just thinking it'd be a fun film conceptually to film. I'm thinking, like, license oh, to yeah. kill, but it's, uh, it, it's, fl it's a guy with a flamethrower. Like, he uses it to clear out underbrush at the end of a season, but then, like, I almost said somebody steals his prized pig, but that's a Nicolas Cage movie. That's a, a Nicolas Cage movie, which does actually pig, exist. Pig, which is, like, rural John Wick. Okay, so we have Fire Down Below, Into the Sun. Uh, these are just the ones that seem like they're closer to what we're trying to find, because, oh, wow, I could just... I could just list these movie names for a while, but that's not good comedy or good or very interesting. But wow, these are bad. Mm -hmm. uh, I will say that probably the closest we can get is uh, Driven to Kill, which is the closest to License to Burn. Mm -hmm. But uh, anyways, it's a flamethrower. To be honest, it's a flamethrower. <laughs> Yeah, it, the one thing I was like, the, the one thing I really like about the Back for Blood flamethrower is um, its range is just long enough that you can hit a sleeper outside of its like attack range. It'll ignite them. Yeah, and it'll kill them oh. because they only have like like twenty health. Um, it's like just long enough reach. The problem is it's so just long enough reach. If you take one step forward, you are immediately in the danger zone. And your character goes, what was that? And then gets hit, on, like, nailed onto the floor and attacked. So. <laughs> uh. So, I learned that one the hard way. I mean, it's fun. I walk into sleepers enough as it is because they like hiding them on, like, the back corner as you walk yeah, into a exactly. room. Which I don't know if that's good game design or not. But, it's uh, game design. It is a decision, but I am also personally a fan of hostile game design sometimes. Yeah, as no. In the developers going, you know what? Our players are little bitches and we're going to make this level hurt. And you know what? That's fun. I'm with it. <laughs> yeah, no. No, I totally get it. I, when it, when it I, I, I much prefer when a developer makes a decision and sticks to it and like doubles down. Yes. Than if they keep changing it back and forth based on people's feedback on how it should work. You know, it, uh, it, it, I will say there are two extremes of that spectrum of sticking to your design philosophy or doubling and tripling down. Uh, the two extremes of that spectrum, I'll call that the uh, PUBG to Fortnite uh, spectrum <laughs> of doing too many things in Fortnite, uh, just going with whatever the tr trend is. And then PUBG of sticking too hard to being, no, this is what the game is about. Uh, and then just the rest of the industry leaves you behind. Mm hmm. 
Yeah, no, it's like, <sighs> oh, what is Fortnite? Oh, it's a creative sandbox. Yeah. I don't think that's the part people are playing the most. You know, you may have had your Travis Scott concerts and your Among Us clones, but I don't <laughs> think that's what people are spending their time playing. You may have your Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, remastered <laughs> I Have a Dream speech footage in a world where people can show up as Rick Sanchez and start dabbing. But... <laughs> Listen, Martin Luther said specifically that we all had to live equally, but only I could have a victory. Uh, anyways, um, uh, anyways, it's a flamethrower. I yeah, mean, it's it's a fun novelty. I'll give it a seven, but that's really all it kind of is—is is a fun novelty. This is a novelty seven. This is the this is the sevens. Now we're finally on to law, the M seven two A seven. Yep, that is uh this. Ah, it is a big cardboard tube. I have to spawn lock these because they each only contain one rocket each. Uh, this is used at the end of Act 6 to fight uh, Act 6's boss. I see, I see, okay. So I have not used this weapon, so I don't really have an nope. opinion on it as it stands in the game, but... It's the only explosive launcher in the game, which is so bizarre. I figured that at the very least they'd put an M79 in it because... Um, yeah. Life for Dead had one, but whatever. They're going uh, for more grounded while all their weapons are more stylized. I don't know. Um, I will ask. All the video I'm seeing of uh, of people using this, they're holding it from the top. Are you holding this upside down? No, I'm holding this right side up. Huh. It looks so strange. Okay, no, it, it seems like the ones I'm looking at have different design carry handles. Um... That, as opposed to the one in yeah, the game. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this whole... You, you shoot a rocket and it goes kaboom, and then you throw it on the ground because there's nothing left inside of it. So yep. the manner of operation here is, is kind of fun. Uh, you open the cap, you grab this whole tube at the top, this bit here, and you pull the tube out. That flips the sight up. There's this little catch. You squeeze that and pull that out. That's your safety. And then, where's the trigger? They're showing the trigger. Okay, this lever at the top that has now sprung up is our trigger. So we hold it like so, and then you um, you would hold it from the top and then squeeze this, this plastic notch down to fire. And then now it's empty and you chuck it on the I ground. I see. Sad. Uh, this is something you don't need to design an entirely new animation set for. Yeah. It would be you would be able to default the animations to be around the same place in the in especially in third person view as uh as the rest of the gun models as yeah. you know ho holding handle near 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 chest or uh or near shoulder or what have you yeah and, and holding yeah exactly and you don't have the deploy animation so you just pull it up like that so, uh, so it does seem to have been designed. Yeah, and it's only used for the boss fight, so I get why they didn't go through a whole rigmarole of designing a bunch of crazy animations for a weapon you use for literally three minutes at the very end of what is now the very end of the game. That seems to be the intent. I'm going to guess that uh, was written in is at the end we use a rocket launcher, and they went, okay, what would be the rocket launcher that we can get in here that will make sense and also yeah. be the least difficult for us to actually... Yeah implement and then there's also kind of the bonus of because this is just a throwaway tube you can limit the player's ammo in a very reasonable Correct. understandable manner because you can't easily so seen, reload these i believe they literally just recycle them i've so, seen version i've seen versions of this kind of design that have like you know four chambers i'm assuming those are like you know like the bigger rocket launchers that i think if you have a goofy big rocket launcher in a game, yeah. it's, that's the design people are going off of. Yeah, and those, you even see them extend the back blast on those. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking of Resident Evil 3 specifically. Uh, uh, Carlos fires uh, one of those that has multiple shots in it, and every time he fires, it, it kicks back. And I remember thinking at the time, like, hmm. wow, they, they, definitely, uh, they definitely, in the original release, for this whole like idea as, or sequence where just like, and then he fires a rocket launcher and didn't really think about the logistics of it. Now let's <laughs> let's consider for a second the operation of a recoilless rifle. Did you hmm. notice the recoil? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, because all it's doing is launching, is, is initiating the projectile, correct? Yeah, and it's, it's, a, it's a whole hollow tube. So there's nothing for that gas to kick back against. 
it all huh. spills out behind you, uh, lighting anybody directly behind you on fire. But um, as well, a result, you, know. you wouldn't have any recoil. The only thing that could possibly be gripping is the rocket might catch the body of now. the barrel ever so slightly, but you're not going to have like the crazy like thunk, like the Team Fortress <laughs> 2 style. Yeah. Sorry, I, I'm thinking about the person who's like, hey, I've got a great idea for a, a flamethrower, okay? So I got this tube here, and we're gonna fire a rocket out the back of it, and then out the front is gonna eject some really big flames, and that's gonna light them on fire. Cool, huh? You only fire it once, but it's pretty cool. Yeah, so hey, why don't you, uh, why don't you fire the, the rocket at them? Yeah, oh. so, so... Oh, that's a good idea! <laughs> so this is what you want. <laughs> yeah, exactly, you just suck your companion launcher! It's... How do you feel about the law? Oh, right. Um, uh, one of your many. <laughs> yeah, one of these contains something. This one, is this one empty? That one's empty. This is the safest you way try, to... Sh this yeah, is you can try shoot it, shooting it. Uh, like, or, no, that like this, though. One of these contains something. Oh, dear. This oh. one. <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, wait, hang on. Can you show me that again? I didn't quite see it. Oh, just hold it there? That's great. Oh, good grief. Uh, <laughs> ah, somebody uh, jammed a Coke bottle in this pipe. Hmm. Oh, let me reach in there and get... Uh, oh, it's a little stuck. Anybody got, like, a, like a screwdriver or something? I'm going to pry it out of there. I'm yeah, gonna I'm just going to... I'm going to go full demon core on it. Let's do it. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, for for the fun gimmicks and wahoos, um, there's a rating we give on this channel for weapons that... Defy classification, and given that this is literally a gimmick gun to close out a DLC, um, I feel yeah. it's it's it, it has definitely earned the rank of G. G. Uh, would you consider this next gun G? Would you consider the M134 minigun? Do you want to do you, do you want to try that number again? The M134 minigun. <laughs> Almost there. What did I say? You said 13-4. Uh, that's... Is it 134? It's M134. Oh, I was gonna say, those are the numbers you wrote. Help! <laughs> no, okay. I see. Oh, good grief. Good grief. Yeah. Science and, has gone too far. <laughs> yeah, Anton could have made this accurate, like, to how it's supposed to be built, but that's not fun. You would literally sit here, like, spooling these for minutes, and then also, you'd have to consider... have a power source and... Consider the practical reality of looking up in detailed specifications and information about a minigun for a long time. Like, if it's a consumer product, that's one thing. But for, like, a fucking minigun, that might get you some eyebrows. That might get- that might be something that, like, actually, I'm not gonna go buy a minigun to figure out how to- how this thing works. I don't have $50,000. I, that was yeah. probably way, way under guessing. I have no idea how much this would cost. Oh, I don't even want to look that up. Um, but if if a representative, same reason. if a representative at General Electric wants to tell me, I'm down to hear it. Yeah. What? Th mm. Sorry, hold on. Is this a GE product? Yep. Um, what? Yes, it's because it's it's an electrically driven motor. Oh my god. So GE provided the motor that makes the uh, the M134 and its bigger cousin, who I think is called the Vulcan, uh, possible. Uh, I will also say that, you know how in Back for Blood you have like the mini guns you deploy? Yeah, correct? this one, this this one is. is always deployed, isn't it? Uh, I will say that I'm seeing a lot of people find more... <laughs> find, <laughs> find more use for the mini guns in Back for Blood as... Um, physically putting it down in a doorway to block access for enemies being able to walk through it, then using it as an actual gun. Yeah, because in Back for Blood, it fires very slow. It fires at the rate of the other LMGs. It's more just deployable cover than anything, because you physically just block progress. The whole concept of here is the area we're going to hold out and you can have a mini gun to fire. We want people to be able to fire a mini yeah. gun in this in this sequence. Uh, in that case, if that's the design philosophy you have, of uh, we want certain sequences where people can hold down and go, oh, this is a good place for a mini gun. Yeah, like the the ferry or the diner in Act One. Why not? In that case, then have the mini gun already be there, but the players can find boxes of mini gun ammo 
that they can bring with them. It doesn't have to take a slot even. It could just be like a collectible you get in oh. the levels that you want to have these minigun spots. Uh, and then once you get to that point, it's, hey, if anyone found ammo, then we can load the minigun and use it. It accomplishes the same thing as deploying the gun without the exploit of putting it in a doorway so tall boys can't fit in. <laughs> so what you're saying is all the miniguns you would find would be empty, but throughout the course of the campaign, you will pick up and add to a stack of minigun ammo on your little like Min active hotbar. They don't bar. even necessarily need to all be empty, but if the design intent is we want the player Here's to... Here's a if specific they're willing... place that you yes. will use this. If Instead you're willing of, to put in the work to to get it, because yes. you have to actually bring the minigun there rather than just have the minigun be there and load it. Yeah, uh, because I have found a couple just kind of laying out like this. And the moment you pick it up, it's like press E to deploy. It's like, well, that's no fun. I'm, I'm on the move. Yeah, exactly. That's the point. It's a game where you're on the move until you have holdout spots, which is a design philosophy that uh, Left 4 Dead and Back 4 Blood both have of you move through the level and then you find spots to hold out. That's good. Um... It would make more sense to just have the minigun be at the spots you think you want people to be. And if your argument is, well, people have more versatility by deploying it anywhere they want, uh, the game is not built around that versatility. The game is not yeah. built around the idea of this ra this random hallway or this random big open field is now going to be where we fortify for a while. Uh, because that's not, what, that's not the point of the game. The longer you stick around, the more noise you make, they're going to come around more. You only want to use that in a situation where you're already be standing still. Mm -hmm. So why have it be that you have to deploy the gun? Uh, on the on the, the subject of being loud, uh, each one of this thing's 762 rounds is um, simulated, including audio, so this makes a oh, very loud God. roar of bullets, which might even be audible from over my headphones oh, into probably. the microphone. Uh, I'm cringing already. Three, two, one, let's jam. Oh, yeah, I can definitely hear that. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. And oh, I, it heats up. Yep, it glows. That's that's so cool. I gotta and, then, lick and, it. and then the steam coming off of it. Oh, that's cool. Sure, like, update 312 by Anton Hand Jr. So, We're adding a new uh, MP5 variant. <laughs> Are you gonna call this G, or are you gonna, or do you, does it have a special place? Does it have its own category? It's no, it, it is G because it, it like it's G. It, if it was, you could carry it around like I thought it would be, kind of like how the M60 is in Left 4 Dead. You just have this thing that doesn't reload. It has a whole whack load of ammo, high damage, high fire rate. You know, you hit the jackpot. Have fun for a moment. Um, yeah. I would absolutely lovingly give it a 10 out of 10 because that, you know, is kind of the dream. But then they go, hey, deploy it. It's like, there's not many great places to do this. And as the campaign goes on, those numbers dwindle. Yeah. The base and game's final boss, you chase it for most of the fight. So you may also notice that in a lot of the uh, areas where you would hold out and would be good use for a minigun. You have a whole stockpile be... of ammo and other weapons. Oh, yeah. But also, it's a good place to hold out. Good pl This would be a good place for a minigun. You know why? Because they already put miniguns there. Because the developers also know it's a good place for a minigun, so they put them there. So there, I've yep. had plenty of times when I was playing where I'm like, I want to save this minigun for when we hold out later. And there's already a minigun there. I'm like, cool, I guess we have two angles covered now, but I kind of... I don't know, the wind feels like it's been taken out from me. Like, yeah. I noticed we never put the shotgun suppressor on a shotgun, oh, so... Oh, let's uh, take a look. I was going to say uh, G and G for GGs for Law and the M13... Or M1433, 7, 3 to the 1 to the 1 to the 3. But um, that was the final gun. We still have is, the odds and ends. This is the guns. Well, this is yeah. most of the guns. We had a, you know... Uh, don't you worry, folks. I've gone ahead and, you know... Secured. Yeah, you nailed yeah. it down. Um, <laughs> it ignored this uh, corner that is kind of yeah. conspicuously not touching the wall. Anyways, uh, do you want to check out the odds and ends little things? Yeah, let, uh, like let's the look at them. Oh yeah. Ah right. uh, yes, this is the very standard design I see a lot these days. I'm assuming yeah. this is the very this is the most modern. Yep. Yeah. Pull like... one, pull two, throw that off and chuck it. I was right in the range, but luckily the game doesn't simulate. It simulates only a little bit of tinnitus, and it's very kind of. Uh, there's a low pass put Muted. on it. 
Uh, it's like, yeah, those one of those bottom three right there that you're looking yeah, at. Yeah, it's like the smoke grenade, but we oh, don't... Oh, those are smoke grenades. Ah, I see. I thought these were all flashbangs. I'm dumb. Okay. Yeah, no. You know I, what? The, ban get... the banana probably should have been a clue that those weren't all flashbangs, now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, this just produces a bunch of... Yeah, no, that's about it. This is the... Please throw it. It's technically oh. safe right now. The spoon has to come off like this, and then I throw it. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Pulling the pin isn't isn't the, the only step for those. Yeah. Yeah, pulling the pin allows that spoon to come off. Next up is the uh, Molotov. Oh. What is it that you've got here, though? It's just a big bang snap that does a flash and smoke. It's like a ninja-style oh. smoke bomb. Oh, I thought that cute. was on the list, but it might not be. Uh, well, yes, that is. That's after Molotov. Uh, that's the bank. That's the you refer to it as giant bank snap. But uh, more realistically, the way it works in the game is it's like a smoke. Is, is it's a, a smoke grenade, but it works kind of like that. Yeah, it's like an impact uh, smoke, not a time smoke or something like that. Yeah, I'll take a look in a second. But okay. right now, the Molotov. It's is it's Frank's exactly what fantastic. It sounds like. uh, Frank's fantastic, festively fragrant and fiercely flavorful fancy fire fluid. Hurrah! Yeah. Hey. Yay! The smoke grenade does work more like the uh, the bang snap that you have. Yeah, it's uh, it's more like an impact than something like you know that. So you know you just it helps if I threw it not at myself. Um, I have done twenty eight damage. <laughs> I also enjoy. Uh, the design of it in game. It has a it has a very fun design in game. Uh, oh, hold on. With like uh, a, Unity oh. Unity Cylinder Colliders. Whee! Here. Last but not least, are you willing to get yourself trapped in a bear trap? <laughs> oh yeah, we have access to bear traps. <laughs> I like how that's the answer. Like, oh yeah, I got bear traps. Yeah, they're here. Um, do I have? Do There's I also have... the. There's uh, barbed wire that you can throw in Back for Blood, but I don't uh, know if you can simulate that here. No, I don't have barbed wire on hand. Absolutely. Yeah, no. And I can't uh, actually collide with uh, it because... Well, okay, now I'm actually getting into interesting territory now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to change the camera real fast. Let me turn on the enable. Oh. Third person player body enabled and see if that allows me to get caught in the... Nope. Ah, I'm Poking stuck. It. I've got to I've got to hold E to oh, open no. it. Here come the ridden. Oh geez, that's what most yeah, of hold e acts uh, five and six are like. Yeah, hold hold E to open on bear traps. Yeah. All I was gonna say is I think Back for Blood would have really benefited from leaning into the like if you're going to market yourself as Left for Dead two developers making a new Left for Dead like. I think they would have done a good job leaning into the things that long-term gave Left 4 Dead 2 staying power. And one of the, if not arguably the most important things for that was mods. Um, so while I appreciate them clearly wanting to put some variety and some of the fun memories that you have of different things in, uh, from, oh, oh, is this what you use these for? I always uh, put that uh, up to, never mind. Um, but I, I just realized I can't say that on YouTube. Uh, after, you know, years and years and years, people still play Left 4 Dead 2 because there's custom content. There's mods, yeah. there's custom campaigns, there's custom weapons. There's a lot of stuff, and it feels like that's not what Back for Blood's focus was. And that's not yeah. necessarily a bad thing. It's just different, but it does mean that marketing itself, uh, as we talked about at the beginning, as Left 4 Dead 2-like, does trap them in yeah. the realm of being compared to it for pros and cons. This is the same problem Mighty Number no. 9 had of, we're not really sure how to market this game other than saying it's Mega Man-like, so we're just going to infer the thing. Well, and see, in, in, in uh, Mighty Number no. 9's case, what the reality is we don't know how to market this thing on its own merits, so we're just gonna do stupid shit. Yeah, um, it's, we're just gonna case, keep saying it's, it's, it's like this thing you know. Yeah, and, and, and when they couldn't legally say that, because, you know, Capcom exists, <laughs> um, uh, then they just resorted to anime fan on prom night, that kind of thing. Uh, Which ironically would have been the audience that would buy Mighty Number no. 9. Exactly. So but making anyways, fun of them, probably not the wisest move. The practical reality of marketing a Left 4 Dead like to people 
I think is very limiting because if you remove the fact that this was a game made by the Left 4 Dead developers from the table, if you don't market that, if you just have the game on its own merits, the reality of the matter is it's pretty difficult to advertise what this game does better than any other zombie game from first blush. Because if you just look at yeah. it, a lot of it is just generico zombie stuff, even though there is a much more interesting story the further you get, yeah. but that's not what was pushed. What was pushed is uh, work together, survive together, back for blood, blah, blah, blah. And yeah. like that's, which is what benefited every, from focusing on the story more. Every other zombie game was saying that and continues to say that. Yep. Um, if they weren't going to try to, you know, you know, push the community, if they weren't going to include um, the capacity for community content in the way Left 4 Dead had, then I think at the very least they should have let the game try to stand at least on its own merits by pushing that, you know, every every run is is a, every run is different. Every player can tackle the game in completely different ways. Here's our deck system. Yeah, from. If you frame it as from the creators of Left 4 Dead, here's a new game. Yes. That's one thing. But if you frame it as Left 4 Dead is back because the original developers are making a new game like that, then you have trapped yourself in only being able to compare it to that old game. So yeah. we have to accept the reality that if we're being honest, the reason Left 4 Dead 2 stuck around longer wasn't because it was a better game, it was because it was a more flexible game. You, like it was a game that you had mod yeah. support on. It was a game that was available on lots of platforms. It was very easy to run on most systems. It had a lot of things going for it that were not specific Left 4 Dead things. It was just you know Valve's Valve's design philosophy, uh, yeah. which you know has its pros and cons. And you could argue about whether or not they they handled the the release of certain projects well or not uh, for for. Uh, for an example of this, see Valve really leaning into community content, but then also the orange box being such a completely limited uh, thing in its release that you can't really expand upon it at all. Anyways, mm -hmm. uh, Back um, for Blood trapped itself in being compared to Left 4 Dead. That's all I'm trying to say. No, I totally, <laughs> I totally get that. Um, and I like that you even brought up um, Valve, because I think even at the time, like, Left 4 Dead hit like just the right moment when people are really starting to look at online multiplayer, you know, from the comfort of their couch. So something like Left 4 Dead, and especially Left 4 Dead 2, hit at, like, just the right moment. And we're starting to get to the point where people have nostalgia for, you know, the, the early seventh generation, as crazy yeah. as it sounds. You know, we have... I mean, they did remake uh, remasters of Modern Warfare 1 and 2 because people love those games and love those campaigns. We have people that are starting to buy back Nintendo Wii's and PlayStation 3's to enjoy a library that's now a decade old again. Yep, uh, and uh, a lot of the games that are being updated or remastered are like the big highlights from the era. Yeah. Which I worry because the big highlights from the era were already games that had a lot of staying power and became culturally influential. Yeah. So if you if you lean too hard into trying to bring back those experiences, you stagnate the industry as a whole. Yeah, and you could argue the industry is already stagnant. Um, oh, because it is, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, no. Um, I will say... I had a statement. Um, but, like, so when you get to... I had to think of it, which is why I started making crazy frog noises. Um, <laughs> um, when you get to a project like... Um, like uh, Back for Blood, when you're hitting at that moment where that kind of nostalgia is back in, and you just go, oh, it's Left 4 Dead again. Not not only you're competing with people's memories of Left 4 Dead, you're competing with the already installed player base of Left 4 Dead, who have a Correct. game they bought for like $3 on Steam like eight years ago. And can... Or got for free, by the way. Oh, they, yeah, they gave yeah. free plenty of times. It, it is worth acknowledging, and I think this may be part of where it lies because you could argue from what we have said that Valve understood what gamers wanted better than Turtle Blood. And I don't think that's true. I think they made a good game with, with Back for Blood. I think it's flawed. I think there, there are some issues, but overall, I think it's a good game. However, Valve as a company was always, always prioritized um, getting cool things out there, even if they weren't their own. So they would often, yeah. you know, 
find seek out other teams or find small teams or small projects. Uh, that's what happened with Portal. Uh, Nar yep. back, Nar Bacular Drop, is that it? Uh, Nar something like Nar that. Close enough. Yeah. Um, uh, but that's what Counter-Strike was. That's yep. that's what Team uh, Fortress was. Team Fortress was that? Is yeah, absolutely. It, it was it was a Quake mod that they they loved so much that they had the um they worked with that team to make a version for Source. Now or, uh, Gold we, Source, and then the rest was history. By marketing itself as from the creators of Left 4 Dead, what they have now done is trap themselves into let's comparing compare this project from a standalone game developer to a joint project between a game developer and a studio whose priority is on publishing creator content and, and, and monetizing it. Yeah. And uh, one of those has much more staying power in the world. The other one does not. So the marketing itself, I think, is flawed. Yes. Um. <sighs> Um, I'm gonna sit here in armchair dev this the the whole time. I do want to say you said turtle blood, but I didn't want to interrupt you because turtle seemed... blood. Yeah. Turtle blood. No. Uh, I thought it was an intentional kind of goof. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, is Absolutely. there anything in particular that you wish to plug? Um, first of all, go check out our putting on the riffs. It's more of us yes. two hanging out. That was a lot of fun. We want to okay. do another one, but. On that There's note. some other things. Um, but if you have anything else you want to say, go ahead and say it. On that note, uh, if you want to go watch putting on putting on the the riffs for us, for like our our two parter that we did, yeah, uh, I would say that there is where I tell people more about who I am and what I do. What I want to very specifically plug here is co-host, just not as a platform itself, but you and I both on co-host write a lot of very interesting. I, I like blog posts going up over upwards of articles. Yours, I yeah. think, read more like articles than mine do. Uh, but which is not a, not a not a um, <clears throat> not a derogatory statement for the record. No, you, no, you, I you get just, it. Uh, but it's, on your it's the way words can, happen. Um, I mean, let's I just think, let's just take a second and just plug co-host. Make a co-host page. Cohost.org. It's it's like the best parts of Twitter and the best parts of Tumblr. It's it's very content forward. You find who you want to follow. You follow them. Their stuff appears in your feed. You can read them. You can share them with folks. There's a whole comment chain with nested threads if you want to have discussions about stuff relating to the article right then and there. Um, it's it's made by a, a small company, the Anti Software Software League. Um, yes. They deserve um, some recognition for what they're doing and some support. And I like using their platform to vent about things that, in my head, don't really work as videos. Absolutely, but that's the same way I like it. Still occupy my brain hole. So, uh, you wrote a piece about uh, review scores, which yep. I would say you should throw in the description if you haven't already. On I, I need to make a I need to make a page of my Neo Cities my co-host stuff, honestly. So, I anyways, co-host is a very good platform. Uh, I recommend yep. following following uh, uh, Blue Jay there. I would also recommend following if you like. Uh, I write thoughts there too, but I'm yep. co-host order slash Sherry. Uh, and uh, you know everything else you can find me if you want, but like I don't, I don't feel the need to promote myself like that. This was this was a very enjoyable joint project, yeah. and uh, I really yeah. above all this was I grabbed some friends and we talked about. We, I grabbed some friends that aren't Dan to talk about games that aren't Left 4 Dead. <laughs> yeah, and, and I... if you want to see more of either of our guests, um, either Garrett or Sherry, let me know, and I can absolutely just be like, hey, I have more. Uh, when can we record these? Uh, um, if we so that way we do, don't record every... <laughs> every if we want to really months. try to do Overkill's The Walking Dead, the files for Overkill's The Walking Dead are not hard to open up. I would be able to get a list of the guns from that, if nothing else. Uh, I would be, if, if, you, if people want to see that, they could say it in the comments. I would be down to do that. If you liked this video and you'd like to see more, I'd recommend subscribing. Coffee and social media links are in the description.